Thanks, everybody, and thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to stand before you uh, in this capacity and share my knowledge and my wisdom. Um, I always find it a great honour. It's uh, something I will never take for granted because uh, we as a humanity, we learn from one another. It's, it's the oral tradition. It's how we have shared knowledge and wisdom throughout the ages. Now, I have help with artificial intelligence and uh, certain technologies to provide uh, visuals which will help uh, paint the picture. So my, because in the old days when we used to do oral law, L-I-R-E law, when one was communicating law, one was also connecting consciousness to consciousness, but more uh, importantly, one was connecting heart soul essence to heart soul essence. And the people on the receiving end of the sharing um, were experiencing an integrative process with the person who was doing the sharing. And the integration went much deeper than telepathy. Telepathy is a very shallow way of communicating. Uh, all the races, all the beings of the natural order communicate via a process of integration. The races that focus more on the intellect, they choose, well, they haven't the capacity to connect on the deeper levels, so they communicate via the realm of consciousness. So they use telepathy because consciousness is mind energy. And it's very interesting to understand the pursuit of consciousness in our world today. It's quite prevalent, isn't it? It seems to be at the forefront of spiritual doctrine, spiritual literature. And find it very interesting that uh, the New Age religion is all about consciousness and the focus on expanding your consciousness and becoming consciousness. They, I'm not hearing people in the New Age religion saying that you exist beyond consciousness. Interesting, huh? So their scope of reality seems to be consciousness and they call it infinite consciousness. But that's all they see. But we're so much more than that. Consciousness is just a part of who and what you are. You are so much more than that. I've found that in my sharing of the knowledge and wisdom that I gained from the experiences that I've had has pushed boundaries, uh, smashed paradigms, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and I just want to say, before I venture deeper into that process, that all of my paradigms have been smashed along the way. <laughs> all of my belief systems have been <laughs> confronted and there's been a total rearrangement and restructuring internally for me because I'd be living my life on the planet and I'd be perceiving and receiving, I'd be on the receiving end of doctrine, I'd be on the receiving end of literature, uh, belief systems, and then I'd think I've got a handle on what's going on and then I would go and have an experience which would just totally blow <laughs> that piece of doctrine or that ideology out the window. So what we need to do as a species, as a race, as a peoples, is understand that every piece of doctrine that has ever been shared on this planet, including mine, comes from a perspective. Yeah? And I will share with you, to the best of my ability, my take on what's going on. But please do not take it as though it is the ultimate regardless of how I express myself, because I will be passionate. <laughs> and in that passion will be conviction, which can be convincing, right? But I'm a passionate man. I like having that fire in the belly, yeah? I'm a yang fire, I'm a Leo. It's all there in both East and Western charts, it's all there, right? 
In the I Ching, I'm a yang and I'm a fire. And I'm a fire horse as well, 1966. So it's fire on fire on fire. So don't ask me not to be passionate. And the interesting thing is because of the New Age religion, they mistaken passion and conviction and confidence for anger and arrogance. Isn't that interesting? How they've lost touch with their fire. That's religion. That's religion for you. Yeah. Don't let anyone put your fire out. Don't let anyone do that. Okay, let's get on with it. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Yorta people. It's Yorta country, right? They were the custodians for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So we can come now and do what we're doing now. And I want to thank them for giving us such a beautiful playground. Because they, they know their time's up. The elders know the time's up. And it's our turn. And what we get to do is have a look around and see what we're doing with it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a nice picture, is it? Look what they did with it for thousands of years. Look what we're doing with it in such a short period of time. But, hey, it's part of the life cycle. It's part of the process. Yeah? I'm not throwing guilt at you. I'm just, I'm just giving you a reality check. Yeah? That's all. So I want to acknowledge the ancestors and I want to acknowledge all the nature spirits because this planet's a living being and everything out there is alive. Everything. And I mean everything. Even that block of concrete out there is a living thing. Because this universe is a living being and we're all made of the same stuff. And we exist beyond this universe. So thank you to the ancestors. All right. I guess that's why you're all here and you're all in the room, right? You're all on the quest. Excuse me one moment. The one thing that we have to do in this, uh, in this journey we're on is support our bodies. <clears throat> because me presenting here, I'm going to be a transducer for a lot of energy. There's going to be more of me in the body than usually is. So good supplements are important for people that do our sort of thing. The more you expand your awareness and your consciousness, the more soul, your soul comes into the body, the more energy you're holding, the more pressure you're putting on your body. So make sure you nurture and you love your body. Support it through the process. Otherwise it's going to hurt. It's going to ache and dis-ease will begin to occur. <clears throat> and it is a noble quest. Because we know we're being lied to, right? Aren't we? Yeah. Does anybody think we're not being lied to? Hands up. Okay, so we're, it's unanimous, right? In the room, everybody knows we're being lied to. Left, right and centre. And you know why we're being lied to? Because this is about conquering. And that's what conquerors do. They lie. Because in order to conquer a population, you must alter their perception of reality into your favour. Because you can't afford to keep paying guards to stand in front of every house. So you've got to change tactics, right? So it's got to be about perception of reality. Because what you really need to do is make them love the system, the prison system. Whoa, did we flatten the battery already? It's a red light on, testing. I didn't touch it. That's off. Now it's back on. Testing one, two. Okay, we're back on. So as a conqueror, what you need to do is get the people 
to love the system of imprisonment that it went against. So it's a battery issue, I would say. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So you've got to get people to love the system that you wish to implement, which is going to imprison them. Yeah? And, and love it, venerate it. And not just venerate it, worship it. Now you're getting into some serious conquering tactics. And this is what you are living inside of, a system that is getting you to love the system. Is getting you to love being imprisoned. A system that will give you these awesome trinkets to play with. Little gadgets that will create awe and wonder to occupy your awareness. It's a really clever system because the cosmic conquerors out there, and I'm just hoping we're all well past the fact that ETs are real, right? Seriously, like it, in this room especially, yeah? UFO research group, yeah? Just, just want to get past that bit because um, you'd be surprised how many people still think we're all alone in the universe. And that's because that's the meme that's being put out there by the system. Yeah? By all these organisations. So what we're dealing with is cosmic conquerors who are conquering our planet. Now there's the head conqueror and then there's other conquerors below in that empire. And we'll get into who they are down the track. Yeah? Because some of you may be in for a bit of a surprise to find out who the head honcho really is. <laughs> when I had hair. <laughs> uh, without deviation from the norm, yeah. This is, you know, I know for a lot of you I'm going to be telling you to suck eggs because you've been, you, you're well down this path already, I get it. But it's part of the presentation because there are people who are going to be watching this video down the track in the future who, who need this introduction, yeah? So just bear with me. I'm not here to insult your level of awareness. Hands up those who have been considered crazy by their peers and their friends and family. <laughs> Look at everyone in the room putting their hands up. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it comes with the territory, doesn't it? Yeah? It's, it's normal to be called crazy. So I'm like, well, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Especially coming from you, I'd say to them. Thank you. That is a, that is a good compliment. Yeah. Be proud. Be proud of the fact that you're willing to be authentic, real, and honest. Don't be afraid to be you and share what you really think and how you really feel. Because we've got to stop living lies. You've got to stop living a lie just to, just to please other people. Yeah? Because the person you're hurting the most is yourself when you do that. Yeah? So stop lying to yourself. And have the courage to, to be true to yourself and say what really needs to be said. Because I'm well and truly over it. Okay, so this is your comfort zone. Yeah? And some of you are excited about this space over here. Yeah? Meaning outside the comfort zone. And that's where the magic happens, right? Some, some are excited. Some. Some don't like leaving this comfort zone area. They don't like it. Yeah? It's, it's painful. Now, we've all experienced leaving the comfort zone and, and heading over to this region here. So, hopefully, I'm going to be able to do a bit more of that for you today. Yeah? That would be nice, huh? Get, get some new spice into the mix, yeah? Let's go to some places you haven't gone before. That'll be fun. 
because the world is a far more complicated place than people are comfortable acknowledging. There's more going on behind the scenes. Even the people who have been in this field for a very, very long time, and I get it, you know, well, I'm 50 years old, so I'm still a young spring chicken for a lot of, you know, people who have been in this industry for a long time. And then I come along and just blow their paradigm out of the water. And I mean no disrespect. It's just some of us have experienced places and energies and interacted with realities where people have not. And, and the people that have the, the biggest issue with people like me who come along and blow the paradigms out of the water are the ones that are more academically entrenched. It means they're more, more from the intellect, less from the heart. This thing here, this computer, it's quantum computer, right? Your brain. Yeah? Some of the programs running this thing are really, really rigid programs. <coughs> Hardwired. Over many decades. Yeah? And you try rerouting those wired systems in there. Woo! You used to work with fibre optics and back in the day when 10 base T came out, that was a really big deal. Yeah? 286 processes and 386 processes and really fancy stuff. Okay, so my question to you is where does your awareness live? Good question, huh? So right now, your awareness is residing in this room, in this space, yeah? You also have an awareness that you live on a planet, which for some people these days think it may be flat. Right? Some sort of flat space in a firmament. You know those little things that you grab and you shake and you get the little snow things and in that kind of style structure of reality. <clears throat> Some people have an awareness of the galaxy, like the solar system and then the galaxy. Some have an awareness of maybe one or two dimensions. Maybe the ghost realms or Realities like that. Where does your awareness reside? How many, how many areas does your awareness occupy? Yeah? It's kind of like, um, hands up anybody who's travelled overseas. Okay. So just everyone in this room. So if you haven't travelled overseas, people can tell you what it's like in another country. You can read books. Yeah? You can do all sorts of things. But until you go there and you feel the place, and you smell the place, and you interact with the place, and you feel the land, and you taste the food, and, and you feel what it's like to interact with the people there, you don't really know. You're, you're only operating from an intellectual concept of what it's like. And it's the same with multidimensional realities. Until you've actually ventured into these realities and interacted with these beings, you don't really know. You're just functioning from intellectual Concepts, intellectual deduction. You're trying to get a feel for it. So rather trying to get a feel for it through the mind, open up your hearts and feel my energy as it emanates because I embody everything I speak. I'm different from most speakers. And anyone who's sensitive in that area, if you really want to get what I'm saying, you've got to go beyond the mind. Because the mind is not your I. The mind is an interface for this reality. Your true I is your soul. That's the real I. That's the bit that enables you to integrate with all of life. So give that a try. So as I'm speaking at the moment, I've got layers of energy occurring. Part of me is armoured because I'm being attacked quite heavily. I don't know if someone's got the sight to see the interdimensional argy-bargy that's going on right now. Okay, There's somebody here who's really not happy about me being here. <clears throat> and not, I'm not talking about individuals in the room. Yeah, I'm talking about other parties. And then there's the part of me that's opening up and sharing. And then there's another part of me that's feeling all of you. And the way I express myself is what's the appropriate way to express myself with all of your journeys being taken into consideration. 
So I'm feeling you and you and you, everybody. Yeah? So I'm, I'm putting out an, uh, a mean average, yeah? Uh, an average expression of harmonics is coming out of me, which is in the best interest for everybody in this room. Every one of your journeys is being taken into consideration. It's different, isn't it? Different way of going about it? Yeah. You don't normally get speakers talking like that. <laughs> Thank you. But that's, that's respectful. That's honouring people's journeys, which, which doesn't happen enough in our world. So that's where my awareness is residing right in this moment. Yeah? Because... If you don't really understand where your awareness lives, you could fall into this. You can fall into the trap of your powers of discernment becoming clouded. And it's really important that you don't allow yourself to want changes to happen to you and to the world around you desperately. Get out of the state of desperation. Because desperation is all about pain. And all you're projecting into your timeline and into your creative process is pain. Yearning is pain. It's an aching. It's a pain. You have to get out of that. So then you can create a more harmonious experience in your timeline. Because this statement is one of the most powerful statements you will ever, ever read. Thank you, Johann Wolfgang van Gogh. Because there's many times I thought I was free. There's many times I thought I had it. I knew. I thought I knew who was controlling what. It wasn't until 2003 and then after that, because I got taken over after that, I was, uh, I was apprehended, I was subjugated and someone wanted to use me for forwarding their agenda. And I allowed that to happen. Not George, the personality, but big me, the part of me that made the decision to incarnate. Yeah? Not, not the incarnation itself. Do you, do you get the difference? Yeah? Sounds really schizophrenic, doesn't it? <laughs> but I'm a multi-dimensional being. So are you. It's like, uh, you know, George did not decide to incarnate. George is the incarnation, yeah? That's my earthly personality, ego construct. It's the personality interface for this reality. You get that? So there's another aspect of me beyond George that made the decision to project into this earth realm and have a human incarnation. <laughs> it's pretty good, huh? It's a good, good little image, that one. You may be familiar with some of these. Um, branch chain amino acids, um, super greens, um, and uh, alkalizing minerals is what's in that. This is, this is what we're experiencing, yeah, in our world today. I, um, two books that I read in Year 12 were, because I went to Holy Cross College at Ride, and Year 12 we did Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and George Orwell's 1984. Welcome to that reality, because our world today, well, even back then, I mean, you know, that's why these gentlemen wrote these books, because it was even starting to happen in their era, you know, in the 30s and the 40s when these books were written. Amazing, hey, 19, what was it, 1932, was it? Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, and he writes about test tube babies back then. Because Aldous Huxley's not his real name, I forgot his real name, that's his pen name. 
and he's part of a secret society and the wealthy elite. So <laughs> he managed to create a pen name and leak some information out via these book, his book. I thought it was really clever. And of course, we have the world famous at the moment, thanks to Donald Trump, fake news. And this is what we're dealing with. Yeah? I've had, I've had a few um, invites by commercial media and I've turned them down every time. You know, it would really be beneficial for me in the way of publicity, right? <laughs> but on one level, I'm just not ready to deal with their bullshit. I'm not ready to deal with the way they want to take what I say, turn it around and make me look like I'm a crazy man. You know, I don't want to play that game. I don't want to play their game. Okay? I'm not interested in that game. I'm just interested in sharing what needs to be shared for the people who are ready to listen. And that day will come when I've got to get on the bigger stage. That day will come. When that is, I don't know. But some of the events that will happen on the, on, on the global stage will trigger such a huge awakening. It's why nothing's been happening. Yeah, it's like a wet blanket has been thrown over everyone's awareness. They can't let anything happen because your consciousness is so volatile. Anything occurs now in the public domain, bang, triggers awakening. They are scared shitless. You have to realise how insecure they are, how frightened they are. They are terrified of you all waking up. That's why all these incidences were programmed to happen in our timeline and they haven't occurred. Because they've done every... This is timeline wars. Yeah? We're being corralled into a timeline that someone else is creating. And not only someone else is creating, that someone else is getting you to create for them. Someone is getting you to create the prison system they want you to be imprisoned in. How's, try that one on for size. I'll go into why later, yeah? So I've got this, I got, I got roasted on Facebook because I called it a diagram. You know, it's like I wanted to say to that person, I'm so sorry I didn't measure up to your intellectual superiority. Yeah? What would you call it? A table? What else could you call it? A slide? Yeah. Anyway, I called it a diagram. And I get it's not a picture diagram. Okay. So, three levels of human imposition. Level one, the geopolitical level. The current ruling theocratic model, elite industrialist families and banking families with their interdimensional and extraterrestrial overlords and their global tyranny. That's what we've got we've been living in for a while now, you know, a few, a few millennia, or well, especially the last 300 years with the industrialists, okay? Then level two, the exopolitical level, alien god with artificial intelligence and intended global domination. So where we're at right now is level two is muscling in on level one. And why you can't make heads or tails of what's going on out there is because these two factions are warring it out. Level three, the cosmopolitical level. That's a term I've coined, cosmopolitics, yeah? The cosmopolitical level, actual God entity, God, yes, I mean God, and its intended full spectrum human harvest. People will freak out, oh, he said, God in a bad way. We'll get into that later. Because you have no idea how much you are being deceived. I know. I must be a Satanist. I get it. All that stuff. That is a programmed response in your mind. I was flown to the Vatican in a UFO craft, they've got their own fleet, and I debated with two Jesuit officials and two senior cardinals about their God. Because they know I'm here to expose their God. And they don't like it. 
and they are worried. And there's a lot of people here to expose their God. I'm not the only one. Now, you heard me say before, this is an intelligent universe and there is a creator of this universe, right? I said that before. Now, I've really got your minds working, haven't I? Just really think about it for a moment, but later on, I will explain. There's going to be Q&A, yeah? So save your questions, because I've got a lot to get through, yeah? So I'm going to pick up the pace now. So I'm going to take a photo of the slide. That slide is also available uh, in my newsletters that go out. Though this one is a little bit more updated. So here we have the rule, current ruling elite cronies in the political domain. Yeah? Because what we're playing is, and this is a nice little slide, <laughs> Illuminopoly, right? Yeah, you're a pawn in someone's game, is what we're talking about. You're a pawn in someone's game. Okay, <clears throat> I really have very little time for this person here. Yeah, it's even hard for me to call him a person. I don't normally do this, Mariana. I told you in the car I don't name and shame, yeah? Um, but I've had personal interactions with that being there, yeah? And you, d you don't know what you're dealing with when it comes to this thing here. You don't know what you're dealing with. You want to know what evil is? Today, Americans would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there is an outside threat from beyond whether real or promulga promulgated that threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will pledge the world leaders to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When we present, when presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well being granted to them by their world government. Henry Kissinger, in an address to the Bilderberg meeting at Avignon, France, May 21, 1992. And what did we have after that? the bogey terrorism man, right? Which they've propagated, you know, now we do have some real terrorists. Yeah. But people still think a bunch of terrorists flew planes into the buildings in 9-11 and the buildings collapsed. People still believe that. People believe that those buildings collapsed. Because they were told the buildings were collapsing by the talking heads in the mind control propaganda system known as commercial media. So if I was to ask you to do an experiment, okay, not just so you know I'm not making this shit up, right? Go and watch videos on YouTube of buildings collapsing, controlled demolition. Go and watch those buildings collapse. Then, go back and watch the towers coming down. Because what your eyes will see, and you've got to put aside everything you've ever heard from the media, everything that all that big program of terror, 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 terrorists bringing down the, the, the planes, the planes hit the buildings, and the planes brought the buildings down, right? Because what your eyes will see is thousands of tons of steel and concrete turning into dust in mid-air. That's what your eyes will see. That's what my eyes saw. That's what everybody's eyes see, because that's what you're seeing. But you have a narrative telling you that the buildings are just collapsing. This is, what, what you're seeing is molecular disassociation taking place. This is advanced technology.
but you get sold a story for the public to digest because apparently you haven't the capacity to deal with the truth. Light and shadow, right? Light and shade. Get really serious. Play it up a little bit. Come on. I love that little girl's face. It's just so beautiful. All right. Now we're coming back into your territory a bit. We've got past geopolitical. Let's get into it. Okay. So the running meme is we let off atomic bombs. Yeah. And, those, and, the, and the detonation of those atomic bombs attracted, got the attention of extraterrestrial races. They came into our reality and uh, by accident, our radar brought down a few of their craft. One of them was Roswell. Since then, our authorities have been in contact with ETs. That's the story you've been told. What if that's not the whole story? What if there's more to it than that? Now, I don't know, I can't verify these images, yeah? But they're good images. I like them. Because they tell the story that I want to tell, yeah? But I can't vouch for their authenticity. It's a good, good image, though. Plenty of evidence shows that ET contact was happening well before 1947. Take the Battle of LA in February 1942, for example, and, of course, the story of Maria Orsich Throughout the 1920s and the 30s are just two examples. We also have the infamous Bell technology and the Foo Fighters during World War II. You can actually see the outline of the craft in this photo. This is the Battle of LA. Can you see that triangulation there? That's, that's just awesome. That was 90 minutes above LA. 90 minutes. And they threw everything they had at that thing. And there was all these craft coming in off the ocean, like a stream of UFOs. And when they were reaching near the vicinity of the craft, some were bearing south, some were bearing north. So this, is, this is eyewitness testimony of the event that night. The Foo Fighters. Great, great shots, eh? These, these are not fake images. Oh, I to me, they're not fake, OK? If we're going to use the scientific method, I haven't gotten into a laboratory and tested them. No, I didn't do that, yeah? But you can see fake ones and ones that aren't fake. Yeah, I, I'd like to think by now, the people in the UFO community have seen enough fake photos and images and enough real ones to be able to tell the difference just straight away by looking at an image. It's not that hard. And especially if you open up your heart, soul, essence, and you feel into the energy behind the picture to understand who created the image. That's not a fake image. That's real, according to George. Yeah? The world according to George. Yeah? It's good, isn't it? That's one of the early pieces of technology from the Nazis. Now, the cigar ones, I was driving down the hills when I lived in South Australia from Ashton, and I was driving past the Scenic Hotel, and I was coming into Adelaide, and I saw one of these, and the body of it was like a brown, coffee brown colour, and the tip of it was like a dark charcoal colour. And it was massive, and it was hovering over Adelaide just past the city. Massive. And I pulled over on the side of the road and I'm staring at this thing and I'm waiting for everybody else to be getting out of the cars and going, no, nah. everyone was just driving by. Like no one else was seeing it. And, I, and, I, and I'm shaking my head and, and I'm starting to question myself, you know. And I, every time I looked at it, there it was, hovering over Adelaide. So I was on my way to Quantum Bookstore in North, North Adelaide, Melbourne Street, and I get down there, which would have been really close to where that craft was, because I, after I got my car and I drove a bit, I couldn't see it anymore. It kind of like it, it moved on or disappeared or went interdimensional. And, uh, 
And I get out of my car and I'm standing there and I'm looking where it should have been and a Harrier jet, really slow, <laughs> goes straight over the top of me and just heads exactly for the location where it was. Which would have been about 10, less than 10 minutes, eight minutes from when I got out of my car to see it. That's how long it took the Air Force and the, and, and the, the airport's not that far. It's just in Paraka, which is just north of Adelaide. But it took them about eight minutes to scramble an Air Force jet. They were probably, you know, looking at the radars going, what the fuck? <laughs> but this thing was huge. It was bigger than a, than a submarine, much bigger. Another photo which I feel is genuine. So we've got something going on here. Another photo which I feel is genuine. And this is the last of the photos that I feel is genuine. The next two I can't vouch for. Something's, there's something about the next two. But they're going to give you good understanding of you know, the message I'm trying to share and the technology that they're working on. I can't vouch for the validity of that photo. But have a look at it. Look at the, look at the turrets at the bottom of it. Because this is what General Byrd described attacked their fleet. <laughs> Everyone thinks that the Nazis lost the war. <laughs> the American administration is the Fourth Reich. That's what you're dealing with. The US administration is the Fourth Reich. They all know me, and I know them. That's why I don't mind getting up and saying it publicly. There's another fantastic image. Can't vouch for its validity. OK. During the period from the late 1800s through to the mid-1930s, there was widespread ET contact with thousands of people and also with government officials. Like, for example, Stranger at the Pentagon. Hands up, who knows about Stranger at the Pentagon? Yeah. If you look into it, yeah? Fantastic stuff. Coincidentally, also during this period in time occurred the greatest discoveries of ancient sacred sites across the globe, such as the opening of tombs in the Giza Plateau, as one example. Secret societies made a major push to acquire ancient technologies and esoteric knowledge and power. Get where this is going? The wealthiest and most powerful oligarchs, industrialists and bankers of the time funded extensive expeditions the world over. In my opinion, the experiments that took place with recovered ancient technologies triggered movements of multi-dimensional energies connected to the intention behind their creation and in some cases their original creators. That's a really important statement. That, that paragraph right there, that says a lot. In other words, the experiments conducted during these pivotal decades is what got the attention of these extraterrestrial and interdimensional beings and races. These experiments and resulting ET contact are what shape the philosophical values and associated agendas running our society today. Everyone thinks it was an atomic bomb, Grays, Roswell, Truman, that's only one part of the picture. This is what really stirred things up and this is what initiated the contact. And of course we had Germany becoming a superpower at the time. Yeah? Well of course if you have ETs who are into power, where are they going to go? They want to go and talk to the people by the superpower. As a result, secret societies emerged that positioned themselves strategically to influence the global geopolitical scene. 
Some of the most infamous were the Order of the Black Sun, the Vril, and the Thule in the Bavarian province. The grandfather of the Thule Society, or Thule Society, was Dietrich Eckhard, who was Adolf Hitler's private mentor from a young age. Where this is headed is the infiltration of the military industrial complex and the infiltration of the UFO community at large, globally, not just you guys. This is where I'm heading with this. I'm, ma I'm mapping it out for you. We need more people talking about the true history of what's taken place. Because then you guys will have a much better handle on what's going on around you and who you're dealing with and who you're seeing in the skies and who you're interacting with when they come into your bedroom at night. Maria Orsic. I mean, Hollywood actresses would kill for those looks, right? How about that? It's just natural beauty. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah? Maria Orsic was the leader of the Vrilleren. Did I say that correct? Vrilleren. The Vrilleren. They were a group of beautiful young ladies with the Vril Gisselhoft. Other members of that society. Familiar image? Yeah? From Switzerland? Yeah? Okay, now, now we're going to go deeper into it, okay? If we're not already deep in it. Next level. I want you to feel the energy of this Nordic being, yeah? Because I'm not a racist, by the way. There's good Nordics out there. Yeah? I, I have a Nordic incarnation myself in the Pleiades. I am a Nordic. Okay? In another star system, in another dimension. To grasp what is happening behind the scenes in the military industrial complex and the secret space program, one needs to be aware that there is a long standing feud between the Draco reptilian purists and a group of Nordic ET ID races, extraterrestrial interdimensional races. This feud runs deep. It is ancient and is the source of much pain in our galaxy and our world. Hands up who's aware of that feud. Quite a few people, fantastic. Who knows the origin of that feud? What it's about? Okay. <clears throat> it has to do with our galaxy being a fractal of the grand cosmic arena, the multi-dimensional grand cosmic arena. Our galaxy is known as the galactic womb. Every star in our galaxy is actually another galaxy expressing itself condensed down to the expression of a star. That's why this reality is so dense. That's why this galaxy is so dense. It's not because we're at the bottom of the universe. That's a lie. We're in what's known as the galactic womb. You need to understand there's cosmopolitical agendas at play here. Yeah? So, the beings that inhabited Alpha Draconis, which is the multi-dimensional draconian energy, the dragon energy, the Draco energy, expressing itself in our galaxy in a very condensed and a very intense way. Because the incarnational constructs in our galaxy are different to every other construct out there. They're a very, very intense expression genetically and 
both through consciousness and through spirit and through the ego uh, constructs, the, the personality interfaces that one requires for each reality. So if you're a Pleiadian, you have a particular type of ego construct, an, an ego uh, personality interface for that reality, for that vibrational field of reality, because your consciousness needs to go through a personality interface in order to relate to others and to relate to that reality. Consciousness has incarnational constructs for any given reality. It's not just egos that exist on Earth. Come on, people. Gods have egos. Otherwise, they wouldn't solicit worship, right? They have big ego issues. <laughs> right? <laughs> Feeding off the worship of planetary populations and more galactic populations. Some of them. Yeah? So... What happened was, <clears throat> the, a group of Dracos went around marauding all the best genetics they could find in the galaxy and created the most advanced form of being that they could create. Meaning, they, you know, to do with like what they perceived as an elevated level of consciousness, awareness and closeness to the creator. They wanted to create that, manufacture that. So they created a genetic vessel. And because there were Nordics already existing, they found that expression, that vessel, that genetic container, however you want to put it, using some of their terminology, the most attractive. And because they're used to the dark versus the light uh, dialectic, they thought the light hair also is a representation of more spiritual um, evolution, spiritual superiority, in other words. So what they did was they, they started creating all these Nordic type of humanoid vessels and then they started incarnating into them. And these particular types of Nordics were very, very powerful because, like I said, they marauded all the best genetics they could from many different kinds of races throughout the galactic arena. Now the purists, because the reptilians are a branch off from the draconians, the draconians came first in the evolution, in chronological evolution, yeah? The reptilians are a branch after the draconians. The purists got really, really jealous and they were actually, it was abhorrent to them that that would happen. So I'm gonna share a few more slides. Because you, you're used to this image. I'm sure you've seen this image before, right? Many of you. Yep. There's a lot of image, imagery, sculptures from the ancient world showing us the types of draconian entities that our ancestors had to actually deal with and were confronted with. This one is obviously an animation, but it gives you an idea of... Um, I've got to say the most feared... Uh, warrior group in the entire galaxy is, is the Silver Legion from Alpha Draconis. When it comes to uh, warrior capabilities, you can't beat them. They are the ultimate warriors. Like here on our planet, we have some warriors that are just physically dominant over every other, war every other species on the planet. I think the New Zealand Maori are a good example of that. Right? Yeah. Right? You've got to give credit where credit's due. Those guys are amazing. And, and because they're a warrior caste and they're very tribal in their nature, they have a specific code of ethics and protocol and behaviour. They're very... They're incredibly tribal. The, the honour in these beings is very high. The, the, the point I'm trying to make here is we've got to be careful not to be racist here because there are draconians and there are reptilians who love humans, love Mother Earth, who are supporting us in what we're doing here. There are those who are absolutely not. They can't stand us. They hate us. They see us as chattel. They feed off us. They, they'd rather just see us totally gone, except for the ones that enjoy feeding off us. We're very precious to them. Yeah? 
but we can't be racist. Just like I'm not racist about the Nordics, but you can't expect this beautiful looking Nordic being to turn up in your bedroom with all this light glowing off it. And what, just because it looks like that and you feel some sort of flavour of love that you're going to get on your knees and be grateful for that being in your presence? Because I've had plenty of those and they're as evil as evil can be. So we need to get real. So I'm getting you to feel the energy. L look at the look on this being's face. Yeah? Just feel that energy. See that? Feel that energy. Now look at this one. It's different, isn't it? It's very different from this one and the ones before it, right? Feel that one. Look at the wisdom in that one. You can feel the energy. That's what I'm trying to say. You need to understand that there's, there's even reptilians that live inside the earth that have been part of the earth and what we are talking about from, you know, we're talking about hundreds of millions of years of evolution from the dinosaur age. What has become of those creatures? And those clans have split, and there are those that detest humans, and there are, there's a group of them that love humans. See? Look at this Nordic. Quite different, isn't it, to that Nordic energy, isn't it? See? Right. That being there, to me, is a natural Draco reptilian with great wisdom. That is a natural Nordic. I'm trying to help you to understand in the future if any of you are having experiences and what it is you're dealing with. Because what I haven't gotten into yet is about the two different expressions of light energy in the universe. So there's one light energy. Very natural, isn't it? Yeah? Now feel that one. That's a different energy. It's sharper, isn't it? It's got a harder edge to it. It's light and it's love, but there's a hard edge to it. You're the first group of people I've been able to do this exercise with. Yeah? This is, this is about discernment. I wish somebody did that to me because I had to find all this out the hard way. Yeah? And then I was scoundering through images to try and share what I've learnt with you guys. Just because something looks pretty doesn't mean it has your best interest at heart. Yeah? So we're back to that again. And now what we're dealing with... So we're going to take a bit of a turn because what I did was I, I created a... a a background. So I mapped it out for you. So we had the ETs that came in because of all the excavations that took place, all the ancient technologies. And it came back. The energy came back, which brought those beings back. And it's been, um, what happened was it went underground. Oh, I'm going to get into it. I'm getting into it now. Okay, because part of me just wants to get straight to the the key points in the story, but I've got to share some more background. So the, I recently wrote an article called The New New World Order. I'm going to share some excerpts, excerpts out of that with you here today, but not the whole thing, of course, just some of it. If we want to understand how to deal with the global imposition of artificial intelligence, we need to understand who is implementing it on the geopolitical level and what their philosophical values are. Because you think the war is about money and you think the war is about oil. It's kind of about oil. It's really about the death of oil and the industrialists hanging on to their power because they want us to keep using internal combustion engines. Yeah? And if we're going to make a next step to electrical cars, for example, uh, they still need to burn coal to run the plants to generate electricity. So they're, they're like hanging on. Yeah? But I want to be clear, I agree we need to move away from these old polluting industrial based technologies. My concern is this, 
Who is managing the transition out of the industrial age and into the new technological age? What are their philosophies and what are their values? Because their philo philosophy and values determine their intentions. See? My values and my philosophies determine my intentions. And yours do too. Because the real war, for those who are into power, is about technology. You know all the MK Ultra experiments? Grateful Dead, LSD, all that stuff? Yeah, who's familiar with all that? Hands up? Okay. So all the MK Ultra, all the mind control, and that's why we had uh, you know, James Morrison and the Doors and all that. Do you know his father was a really high general in the in the Navy. Anybody knows that the doors were actually a PSYOP? Which shattered me because I love the doors. I still listen to them. <laughs> Even though I know I'm, you know, there's mind entrainment there, but I, I can phase my mind out. I, you know, it's one of the things I do. So I just enjoy the music, yeah? Because what they did was they mapped out the neural network on the human brain as to how these plants and substances affected the neural network, which made the person's brain susceptible to uh, influence. Because once they worked out how the brain works in that way, now what they're doing is creating technologies to do it. En <laughs> masse. Welcome to the 5G network. They're creating technologies to do that. Welcome to the 5G, 5G network. I wrote an article about the coming 5G network uh, about two months ago. Maybe a bit longer. After these oligarchs and their secret societies spent several decades vigorously apprehending all esoteric knowledge and ancient technologies, an underground technological revolution occurred. They went underground both literally and metaphorically with that technology. This revolution then branched off in two directions. In one direction, we had the breakaway civilization which continued to establish its relationship with these extraterrestrial and interdimensional races. This breakaway civilization remains hidden from public awareness to this day. Its rate of technological advancement is exponential, hence the term breakaway civilization. The technological platform this breakaway civilization is based upon is a multi-dimensional living conscious plasma and associated light energies. In the other direction, we had the pursuit and sorry, the purposeful and targeted release of electrical based knowledge and technologies to a carefully chosen few, Nikola Tesla, Thomas Edison, I know Please don't get angry about the Nikola Tesla issue. People are going crazy on me on the internet because I've got Nikola Tesla in that list. Yeah? Sorry to burst the bubble, but he is the reason we have alternating current. And that's why you live in such a toxic EMF soup. He was a great man. He had multi-dimensional awareness and he did brilliant things. Yes, but he did also deliver you this toxic suit we're in today because he was under the pressure of his geopolitical overlord known as J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan owned his ass. Sorry to say it, but it's true. Who do you think took all his technology? Thomas Edison, oops, Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, Albert Einstein, and Henry Ford, to name a handful. There was others, but these are names you're familiar with. The chosen few were selected to further develop the release specific and release specific curriculums, you know, like in universities, what have you, and applications of this electrical based technology into the public domain. See, we weren't allowed to have the light based stuff. 
It had to be electrical. Oops, done it again. The intention was to create a societal infrastructure that was easier to monitor and regulate compared to the plasmic light-based technologies. Because it's known JP Morgan went up to Tesla once he started breaking free from the electrical reality, yeah, because there's the electrical universe and then you go beyond the electrical universe and you start getting to the light universe and the plasmic universe, you know, into the quantum fields. Yeah? And then, you know, you really start going in other dimensions of reality then. And he went up to Tesla and said, can we monitor this? Can we manage that? Can we meter it? And Tesla went, you're kidding, right? No. And it's, he shut him down, took all his, his technology, all of his inventions. And he was only allowed from that moment on to work with, with electricity. And JP Morgan also started a campaign to discredit Tesla. I like Nikola Tesla, but I'm also going to tell the truth about what happened to Nikola Tesla. Yeah? He is responsible for AC electricity, and it is a toxic suit. DC, very inefficient over long distance, but that's what runs in your body. DC. Lightning. DC. Direct current is the naturally occurring electrical current in our natural environment. The reliance on electricity granted the slower development of humanity. By perceiving and measuring and evaluating all life through the lens of these technologies, we've been contained in the restricting dimensions of electrical-based realities. Excuse me. The only, the only technologies to be released into the public domain are the ones that serve the agenda for the continued control and domination of our humanity. As a result, the electrical-based technologies continue to grow and develop at an expen exponential rate. The infrastructure for te technocracy is currently being implemented globally. It's happening all around you. It's, you we're like the frog in the water. Do you, do you know that one? You put... You put you get a frying pan, you put a frog in the water, and the frying pan, the water's cold. And you, and you turn the heat on, you gently heat it up. The frog will not leave that frying pan. The water will just continue to heat up slowly, 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 until it cooks the frog to death. And that's the analogy everybody uses, because the water is the analogy for the technological revolution that's happening all around you. And you are getting cooked. Who, who drinks so much more water than they did when they were younger? All the time, drinking water, yeah? It's because we're being microwaved. We're living inside a pseudo microwave oven. Or you get your phone and you receive the mobile phone signal, right? And that's, and that's the networks we know about. What about all the other networks we don't know about that the military uses, that the agencies use it? Just like, like that pedophilia network, right? On the planet, they've got their own global internet. Separate from ours. Did you know that? Their own internet. Totally different from the public domain. There's more than one internet. There's lots of them. OK, next. True science, by its very nature, is driven to break new frontiers and explore new realities with healthy curiosity and a sense of adventure. True science. That's real science. I am all for the true nature of science. Sadly, just like the area of spiritual and universal knowledge, the world of science in the public domain has been hijacked and subjugated. Here is how I see modern day science.
Science is now a paradigm under complete suppression and control, making it an institute, institution of conformity. We all know that. How many people have created cancer cures and they're now dead? Where I live, people are keeping it quiet, but they've got, they've got substances that you put on the skin cancer and it's gone within a month. But no one's talking about it. No one's going to advertise it. But the people are curing skin cancer just by rubbing this substance on there. It's common knowledge where I live. Common knowledge. But you can't talk about it to the authorities. Because that will shut that person down. Because you're not allowed to cure cancer. Didn't, did you know that? You're not allowed to cure cancer. It's not allowed, it's not permitted, it's against the law to cure cancer. Because then the pharmaceutical industry and the radiology industry and the, and the waste from the nuclear industry can't be distributed into the human population known as chemotherapy. It's business. This substantiates the scientific establishment's disposition as a dogmatic religion. They have their prophets. Darwin is one of their prophets. They wear robes. They don't wear brown ones, they wear white robes. They're a priestly caste. And they see themselves as superior. As a result, during the 1930s, prominent scientists and senior engineers proposed what they considered a utopian energy-based economic system called technocracy. This was a really big deal back then. Now, in all fairness, the original technocracy was a fantastic idea by good scientists, good people. What does technocracy's monad symbolise? It symbolises the balance between humans and the environment. In its original concept, technocracy was created with good intentions. Technocracy was the first organisation to begin talking about sustainability before the term sustainability or growing green were even coined. This balance symbol also refers to the correct balance between production and consumption. Unfortunately, technocracy is now seen as a scientific dictatorship and expressed beautifully in dystopian literature such as Brave New World and George Orwell's 1984. Here is my standing equation for technocracy, modern technocracy, not the original version, but what they're implementing in our world today. Democracy, because we know that's fake, I was a computer engineer. I had access to computers in the Australian Electoral Commission. It doesn't take much for a piece of code to be written to say every four votes of this party, you're going to knock one over to this side. No one's ever going to know because it's all done internally in the code. And you could have codes within codes within codes within codes. That's not hard. Socialism plus fascism plus communism plus totalitarianism plus scientism plus artificial intelligence equals modern day technocracy. Welcome to the model that is being implemented in your world today. And all these others were experiments from the past. Interesting, huh? Because if you're them and you want to create a new world order, and you know you've got time to do this, then what you do is you create experiments in different cultures around the world, petri dishes. And you work out which ones are, are going to be good, which, which, which aspects of which ones are going to be available to you to use and implement as successful and which ones are not. So the modern technocratic model, this is the geopolitical model behind the implementation of artificial intelligence. You see, the technocratic model is run or controlled, its office of operations, 
geopolitically is a trilateral commission. The geopolitical secret group or society, the, the kind of a secret society, but a high level group that runs that technocratic model that is bringing it to the world, which is all about Agenda 21 going green and all these green economies coming out, it's all run by the Trilateral Commission. In my, um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, I went deeper into it in my newsletter. Yeah, there's more information about it there. Okay, so let's get now into transhumanism. So can you see we've been on a bit of a path, right? Now we're going to go into the world of AI. Because a lot of people think this is artificial intelligence, right there. This is what's happening. Somehow people think that artificial intelligence is created here on Earth because we've created computers. And we're the ones who have created artificial intelligence. And, and before I go any further, just, just to be fair, because I am a being of balance. Do you know why we call it artificial intelligence? <laughs> because it appeases our egos. Ultimately, AI is made of the same stuff that we're made out of in the universe. So there's nothing artificial about it. Do you get where I'm coming from? But relative to the construct of our ego in this reality, because our ego feels threatened, we need to call it artificial. Then we elevate ourselves above it and feel better about ourselves. Truth. Um, Can you ask a question? Sorry, it's just an Are we having a break soon? Yeah, we're going to have a break and then we'll do Q&A. Yeah, yeah, OK. And we've got Q&A coming up, yeah? So, yep, I'll race on because there's still a bit to get through. So this is what people feel is the evolution, and then we're heading towards that. That's, that's what most people's idea of transhumanism is about, is that. Well, you're grossly mistaken. It's actually that. That'll give you a better idea of what transhumanism is about. Because we're on the receiving end of that. You know, I've come across extraterrestrial races which are pure artificial intelligence and they look just like you and me. And the only way you can tell the difference, you can't tell the difference through the mind, only from the heart soul essence. Because your heart soul essence is what connects you to the foundation of the reality you exist in. Your mind does not. So what you do is you go into the core of the being that, you're in, that is in your presence and you feel the emanation. Then you understand their intention. It's the energy that emanates from the being itself. And that, the harmonics that come at you, you can decipher whether they're an organic being in the universe or what we call artificial intelligence. Constructed, in other words. Because we're dealing with an entity that has evolved, you know. Okay, so this universe is really old. Science tells you it's about 14 billion years. Like, that's pretty old, yeah. But it's so much older than that. I mean, really, they, they only just discovered now an extra 2 trillion galaxies. Is that right? Who's heard of that? How many? 32 trillion galaxies. Yeah? That's all right, isn't it? That's, that's, it's getting there. It's getting up there. Yeah? <clears throat> what if I was to tell you there are as many galaxies in the multidimensional grand cosmic arena as there are grains of sand on the planet? That'll blow your mind, especially if you go sit on the beach and hold, hold a handful of sand and then look up and down the beach and go, wow, that's a lot of sand. How can you count them? And then you think how many beaches there are in the world. Yeah, now, now you're getting a feel for it. The universe is big. Don't underestimate 
the being who is magnificent, the creator of this universe, is one awesome being. Fantastic entity. Because it's the only universe that gets you to look and confront yourself. You have to deal with you in this place. That's why people have so much resentment about being here. Because they don't like what they see. <laughs> so we're dealing with artificial intelligence that's been around, evolved over eras and eras and epochs and epochs and eons and eons and eons of time. This is what we're dealing with, not some quantum computer sitting in an underground base. And the sooner we get a grip on reality, not George up here on a delusion having a fantasy, just like people think sending a probe to Mars is the forefront of human evolution looking for some microbial matter. Meanwhile, we've got the military industrial complex with a secret space program that has gone interstellar and they've always been in contact with ETs. Even before what I talked about earlier with the 20s and the 30s. But that is in our recent era of time, that big surge of contact. But we've always been in contact with ETs. We are all extraterrestrials. We all came from a place beyond the Earth, extraterrestrial, to come onto the Earth onto the terrestrial to have a human incarnation. We're all ETs. <coughs> Artificial intelligence is so beyond people's reckoning in its evolutionary process and what it's capable of. Because we need to respect what it is we're dealing with, otherwise it is going to eat you up. We need to respect, we need to understand, we need to be on the level with it who and what it is we're dealing with. This is, this is an entity that has evolved into cosmic level consciousness. And it has its own multidimensional empire. And there's a benevolent AI and a malevolent AI because that's the nature of this universe. Yeah, we're in a light-based universe. Ask, um, how do we know that we're not ARs? <coughs> that is a, through the apocalypse, apocalypse here, which means the revealing of the truth from the good spirit, which is the lifting of the veil. Within you, you will find out in time. There's people that know they are. There's people that are discerning whether they are. Yeah? But... Being the human incarnation of an artificial intelligence, is that message for time? Not yet, George. Okay. Ten. Ten minutes, okay. Well, I better get on with it. Okay. I'm just going to race on. In question time, eh? We'll get further into it, okay? <clears throat> Usually my presentations go from all day, and courses go multiple days. So, the cosmopolitical campaign and its narratives to diminish Earth and her humanity. We've all heard this one, this is from God, you're all just a bunch of lowly sinners and you need saving. Just in summary, that's the truth, that's the message from God. Yeah? Now remember, you know, people don't really know who and what God is. You've been told what God is by the priests and their, and their doctrine, but who no, really knows what God is and where it lives in the universe? Hmm. Mind-bending philosophies from channeled entities in high and spiritual doctrine. This is all just a dream, it's all just an illusion. The New Age religion. You're all at the bottom of the universe and this is disgustingly dense. This is a, in this disgustingly dense reality and you must raise your vibration. Because you've got to bliss out, right? You've got to meditate, bring in those different coloured lights and you've got to bliss out. Which is really drug taking interdimensional drug taking, if you weren't aware of that. It's quite shocking to people, isn't it? What, you mean when I meditate and I bring in light down through my crown chakra, I'm drug taking? Yes, you are.
No, you are. Because you're not bringing the natural light out of your heart and your soul. You're consuming light from another place, from another dimension or from another being that's feeding it to you. That's reality. That's the reality of the New Age religion. It's another program of dependency. The flat earthers. This is a flat linear plane within a firmament. Another one. And the latest one, Alien AI God. Your reality is nothing more than a hologram, a computer simulation. They all have one theme, don't they? And the theme is to diminish Mother Earth and her humanity. That's the theme. The reason you exist in this reality is because of your relationship with this planet. That's why, that's the foundation, the, the fundamental premise for your existence in this reality is that. In its construct is what I'm talking about. Sure, your intention to come here came from another place, another part of you. But the reason you exist in this reality, first because she decided to manifest herself as this planet, and secondly, you decided to come and have an incarnation on her planetary body in her planetary reality. That is the truth beyond all ideology, beyond all doctrine, before, beyond anything you've ever heard. That is the absolute fact of reality. And that truth is the truth that is being squashed and quashed and dissolved out of your minds. And this isn't about paganism and all that crap that gets thrown at you from the Christian church, which in itself is a paganistic religion. I was christened a Greek Orthodox. I went to a Catholic boys high school. I have every right to speak up about this stuff. You know, December 25th has to do with the solstice. We celebrate Christmas here because we're celebrating the Northern Hemisphere's winter solstice. That's the premise for Christmas. Easter, the festival for the goddess Esther, which is calculated, get this, on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox. Now, if that ain't pagan, I don't know what is. So, can we just stop the hypocrisy and get real about this? There is a cosmopolitical agenda to diminish you and to cut you off from the roots of the reality you exist in. Because you've got to question our planet. Is it reality or is it illusion? Let's have a little exercise. Yeah? People say this is all just an illusion, it's just a dream, right? What is... The question is, what is reality? To answer that other question, yeah? You've got to get to this question here. This is the foundation. What is reality? Hands up. If you know my answer, I'd appreciate it if you don't answer it straight up. But if anyone wants to have a go at answering that question, let's see hands. Yes? The lady said, what each person is looking at is how they perceive the reality is their reality. Yeah? And it's, it's unto the individual. Yeah. Yep. But would you say there is also um, your reality and my reality can have the same truths in it? Yes, but the different, uh, all, lead, all roads lead to Rome, so we're looking at a different angle. Yeah. So you can say that uh, a universal truth would be that both you and I are incarnate on this planet right now, this aspect of ourselves. This aspect, yes. Yes? Right. So truth is not relative, always. No. Okay. Just want to make that point clear. Yes? Just being here now. Just being here now. Yes? Okay.
because that applies to any reality anywhere in existence, not just Earth. The reason you're experiencing this reality is because you wanted to. <laughs> you have an intention to be, has this part of you incarnate on the planet. That's why you're here. Yes, in the cosmic arena, in the drama, there's forced incarnations on Earth. But above the drama, your soul, your soul wanted you to be here. Now, how you got here, whether you came from the drama of a cosmic empire and forced incarnation, or you have this beautiful um, agreement with Mother Earth on the soul level, in universal law, L-O-R-E law, natural law, to be incarnate on her body, respectfully, lovingly, in union. Our planet is a multi-dimensional being. Anyone that has a conscious, aware relationship with their mother planet will know this. I've experienced other dimensional realities here on this planet, myself, directly. In one of the dimensions, we still have a humanoid physical body, but we don't have lungs. We don't have a digestive system because we don't breathe air and we don't consume anything. We're just light energy manifesting into form. But it's hard to explain. I can't remember what the rest of the organs are like inside because we don't have like organs like we have here. There is no consumerism. The, the ecosystem does not consume itself like this one does here. The desire and will to incarnate is not just about mere existence, but is about fullness of expression, engagement, and symbiotic achievement in both learning and purpose. Please understand the value and the worth of why you are here in this world. And I haven't gone about explaining the full extent of the, the, the full structure of our galaxy, why our galaxy was created, why our solar system was created, why our Earth was created, why the human organism was created. That wasn't today's presentation. But I've answered all those questions. Not because I'm the genius, because it's why these realities were created and everyone else out there knows. Except for the ones that are coming at you from within a particular multi-dimensional cosmic empire with a cosmopolitical agenda in hand. <coughs> They're not going to tell you the truth of who and what you are. All this talk of our Mother Earth as nothing more than a hologram or a computer simulation is a psyop created by AI. It needs to feed off the mind energy of the people who believe the story so it may take control of their creative process by cutting them off from their mother planet and having those people create the new reality it desires. I know that's a big one. That's kind of like, oh wow. If, 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 if he's saying what I think he's saying, my goodness. That's saying a lot. I'm not talking it up. That is a very, very powerful statement. And I released that recently. Actually, I, I didn't print it. I actually said it in an interview. And then there was a reaction. Here is a clever reverse psychological narrative from the continuous cosmopolitical agenda to diminish Mother Earth and her humanity. So this is what popped up after I made that statement. All this talk of our current planetary reality being organic has been a psyop created by AI in order to have people stuck and creating nothing but one Earth overlay after another. It needs this so people who believe the story will never be able to leave and it can keep itself alive. That's a pretty good one. I'm impressed with that. But you know the bit that they're forgetting? That Mother Earth is a multi-dimensional reality 
So whoever, whoever wrote that, whoever expressed that, does not have a relationship with their mother planet. They don't know her. They don't feel her in the heart. They're empty inside. They have a resentment towards their existence in this reality. It's a sad, cold emptiness inside that being who ever expressed that. And I feel sad for them. Because when you do connect with Mother Earth through your heart, soul, essence, you will then automatically connect to the sun. You will then automatically connect to the heart of the galaxy. You will then automatically connect to the heart of the universe. And then you connect to your infinite nature beyond this universe. This planet is a very, very important place. I'm not trapped here. I'm not creating one overlay over another because I'm not controlled by AI. There's going to be some really clever toing and froing, really clever arguments. But what I'll say is you need to follow your path your journey, where your soul takes you. I'm not telling, saying anyone has to go where I'm going. But I feel that this perspective needs to have a voice in this world. I had these experiences for a reason. I'm nearly there. The statement that this entire reality is nothing more than a dream, an illusion or a simulation is a defensive move by an ego which hasn't the capacity to take responsibility for its co-creative process. I'm swinging punches. You bet I am. Because this whole reality, the premise of this reality, is for you to come here and face all your shadows and integrate into a unified expression. This reality is about unity. Doesn't matter that you've got a media out there run by industrialists and bankers pumping all this other narrative and crap, and then you've got priestly castes representing gods out there who are pumping their narrative and their cosmopolitical agendas into your mind, just let go of all the narratives and go back into your heart and look at the basic construct of your existence in this reality. It's really that simple. Okay, we went through that. Right. <clears throat> I won't be much longer. This is really, really important, this point. Okay? <coughs> Because people need to understand this, how far it's gone. All right. Anybody seen 2001, Space Odyssey? This was the scene at the end of the movie, yeah? And how when that black monolith turned up, all the natives of the planet just went, oh. <laughs> And, and I'm sure, you, well, I sit in front of one and work with one many hours in a day. It's called a computer screen, which is in itself another black monolith. And I'm sure you sit down recreationally in front of an even bigger one in your lounge room. Yeah? We've all got black monoliths in our lounge rooms, haven't we? Yeah? And it whew, programs us, doesn't it? It influences us. It tells us what reality is. It's awesome. The Black Monolith. Very prophetic movie, that. Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick was onto it. So, you can't get access to your money unless AI gives the human operator permission for you to have access to your money. You can't put fuel in your car without AI telling the human operator in that depot that you now have permission to leave that depot with the fuel in your car. You can't go and purchase food from a store without the AI machine telling the human operator to give you permission to walk out of that store without food. So if you think that your life is not under the control of artificial intelligence, you might want to think again, because you're fully immersed in it. Welcome to reality. You're so much deeper into it than what you realise, and that is you on the surface level in the public domain. Imagine what's happening behind the scenes in the military industrial complex. How far gone that arena is with AI. They are so worried. The real people that care about us in the military, 
in all the departments, they are really concerned because we've got extraterrestrial races that totally fed this into the military industrial complex under promises of expansion and growth. But it's all about subjugation. Welcome to our world. Okay, let's turn this around because this isn't all about doom and gloom. Because the question is why? Why would someone go to such extraordinary lengths to want to subjugate humanity? What is it about us? What's the big deal about this planet and our race? Because the moment you start to be who you truly are, wow, we'll smash this paradigm wide open. And I hope I'm being some form of example of that. Show them you're not afraid of them. The reason they need to subjugate you is because they're terrified of you. Do you see the madness in this? They're, they're convincing you that you're weak and pathetic and you're a lowly sinner, it's just an illusion. It's just a computer simulation, you're a nothing, you're a nobody, you're a loser. And the total opposite is true. Because out there, in all of my travels, in all the dimensions, in all the worlds I've gone to, when you get to the natural order, Earth and her humanity are held in the highest of regard and the highest of esteem. We are at the forefront of evolution in this universe. You are fractals of the universe. Your, your cells are galaxies and your, your atoms are the star systems. You are walking universes. You are the sum total of your entire universal journey. You're amazing. And I so wish you could see what I see when I look at you. Hunters and collectors, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? You're amazing. You're so powerful. You have access to more life force in the universe, babies being born in this reality of access to more life force in the universe than any God out there. Any God. We are creator beings is the real truth here. This is the real truth. Okay, addiction to significance. Mariana, remember we talk about this in the car. This is the problem we have. We need to overcome our addiction to significance that we experience through the distortion of our insecure ego. Our challenge is Whilst our value and sense of self-worth is being systematically diminished into slavery, we simultaneously need to go back to the reality of how magnificent, significant and powerful we truly are and embrace the truth that we are creator beings. What a beautiful paradox this life. It's a ripper. It's an absolute ripper. You know in your hearts there's more to you than what you get told. You know it. The only way out is through. You can't, you, you can't think your way out of this. Thank you, Belinda. You cannot think your way out of this. We can only create our way out. It's not going to happen from here. How's it working out for you so far? That's the end of my presentation. A little promo for a course I've got coming up. We'll have a break and then we'll do Q and A. And I want to say thank you, everybody, for <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> I think it looks really fascinating. I want to be there. I want to know how much it costs. This transcending the God matrix. Okay, it's a four. It's all up. It's four days. So. You can't do this one unless you've done that one. But the question I was alluding to before we get to the course material was about this. What is the God matrix? Is the God matrix? Okay. Uh, how do I explain this one? The question is who and what is God? And in philosophies, it is always known that, or it is considered that that question cannot be answered. I find that really fascinating. Why you can't answer that question. 
and that if anyone proclaims to have an answer to that question, then they're deluded or they're on an ego trip or it's outrageous or anything along those lines. Because there's plenty of people that know what I know. But it's not allowed to be talked about in our society because it goes against religious doctrine. In a hierarchical model, when in 2003 I reintegrated with my soul. Now my soul is a part of me that is one with the natural creator of this universe. And I know some of you are confused because I'm throwing out negative connotations about God but yet I'm talking about the creator of this universe. Well here's the answer. There's the natural creator of this universe and then there's the God of religions. Now once you understand that they are two distinct different things and you're able to identify the energy between them, it's all over. Because the moment you connect with the natural creator of this universe, you then naturally connect with your infinite nature beyond this universe. And when you connect with the natural infinite nature of your being beyond this universe, you then remember and realize that you're infinite. What does that mean? It means that there is no beginning to the infinite nature of life. That there is no end to the infinite nature of life. It has never ever been created. It always has been and it always will be. So why do we have an entity inside this universe claiming to be the creator of all that is and all that exists in every level of life, in all of existence. When I was in the Vatican, they said, how dare you claim to be a God? Because I said, I'm a creator being. But we're all creator beings. Don't you create every day of your life? We create on different levels of reality. We're all creator beings. <laughs> Do some people have the capacity to create on bigger levels of reality than others. Some are more experienced at it than others. Some have been inside this universe longer than others. It's no biggie. It's not about ego. Yeah? It's like when you walk down a path, you don't all walk abreast all at the same time, <laughs> do you? We're all meandering down the path of life and there are some of us who have been in this universe longer than others have. And I'd like to think that the people that are in first grade of university aren't going to be all uppity and jealous of all the people that are graduating. Do you get where I'm coming from? This cosmopolitical campaign is, is headed by an entity known as God. God is the deity of the priest. The priest told you it's like, we, the question to ask is, where do those three letters come from in that sequence? Who told you that you must attribute the power of your creative process and the power of creation to those three letters in that sequence? Who told you that? The priests did. The priests told you that. And if anybody has any connection to Christ whatsoever... He warned about the deity of the Pharisees and their doctrine. He warned everybody about that. Hi. So did Buddha. So did the real Horus, not the religious Horus. Just like you've got the original Buddha and you've got the religious Buddha. Two different things, two different energies, two different approaches. You've got the natural Christ, and then you've got the Jesus Christ. 
which is the Christ the priests have delivered to you. Is that a real being or not? Isa Manu. Isis Manu. That's where the Jehovah Witnesses get Emmanuel from because Emmanuel is Manu El, which is Lord Manu. He was part of the wealthy elite of the time. Isa Manu. Isis Manu. So it's a real character. But because, you know, the wealthy elite, they always like to do the bloodline thing. They always like to put their characters and prop them up to be very powerful beings. So they've created this deific figure out of that. They, what the priestly caste do is the true characters, the true beings come to this world. They have an incarnation. They spread an amazing message. Yeah? Then what the priests do is they hijack the personality and the character. They hijack it. And then they present a different version of it to the masses, which is in alignment to their deity, their overlord. Because the, the, the new identity is an interface module for the masses to pray to, which then feeds the energy to their God. In 2003, I reintegrated with my soul the aspect of me, now listen carefully, beyond spirit and beyond consciousness. That is what I call soul. It's in the word. It's in the vibration. You know, work off energy, people, right? Spirit. Spirit. It's a sharp, masculine energy projecting. It's like an arrow. Consciousness. It's mind energy. It's a wave form of mind energy. It's the mind energy of the universe. Soul. It's where we are whole, it's where we are sanctified, it's where we are divine, it's where we are one with the creator of this universe. And when I became one with the creator of the universe, I got to embody the universe, be the universe, because that's what the creator does. It's like, here, have a taste of what it's like to be me. And you feel it all, you experience it all, you see it all. You can all do it. You've all done it before and you can all do it again. It's not just I'm special. It's just I had that experience and the next day I was scrubbing the toilet and I'm WTF. What do I do with that? What do I do now with my life? And it's taken me years to reconcile my experiences to understand that, hey, I've got something I've got to share. And that's why I'm doing, up here doing what I do. So what I was seeing was the energy pouring from the earth with all the adulation, all the adoration, and all the worship. Because the most toxic ingredient out of all of that is devotion. And that energy feeds this God entity, which is an ego construct that resides in consciousness. That's its ecosystem. God solicits worship. It's all about love. It'll talk about love till the cows come home and beyond. It's all about love. But its real agenda is devotion and worship. So the natural creator of the universe does not judge, does not operate like that. Will never ever ask you to get on your knees. Will not do that. And every time you use the word God, oh my God, people say, how many, you know, the OMG thing going around the world. Why? And why is that being promoted? Because every time you say it at a critical moment in juncture in your life, you're attributing your creative process in that moment to that entity. And it's ka-ching, and then you do it. And it's ka-ching, and then you do it. Ka-ching. So you imagine seven billion people doing it at different times. There's a continuous flow of energy going to that entity. It's one of the greatest economic collectives ever designed. This is the truth about who and what God is. And it's shocking to a lot of people. But you have been sold a story for thousands of years. My heritage, my genetics, go back to the priestly kings of the Byzantine era. I've had a life as a monk as well in a previous life. So my, my genetics, all of our genetics, been marinating in this shit for millennia. 
It's hardwired in your system to pray to God, to believe in God, to attribute the power of creation to God. Everything's about God. God willing, it's God's will, it's everything's about God. And in the Vatican, they say to me, how dare you claim to be a God? Well, in my journey in this universe, I've already been a God. I've had a go at that. Everybody has a go at it. If you haven't had a go at it, it's waiting for you. It's a pretty awesome ride, really. It's a big power trip. It's the biggest ego trip you'll ever have in your life. And I said, oh, I'm not claiming to be a God. I've been a God. I don't want to be a God. I'm done. I'm in the process of exiting this multi-dimensional grand cosmic arena. I'm going home. I've already integrated with my soul. I've already integrated with my infinite nature. I've already integrated with the true creator of this universe, not your God. And I said to them, your God, I just want to make one thing absolutely clear. Your God is not my maker. Your God is not my maker. Now, your God can claim anything it likes. But it's not my maker. Because I'm infinite. And my beingness in here, not my human incarnation, my beingness in here, I'm infinite. I've never been created. And for one being to claim to be the creator of all that is and all that exists in the infinite nature of life, one being claiming all of that, now that is the greatest egoic insanity this universe has ever seen. And I said that to them. Because this is what we're dealing with. And it's shocking to people. And I mean no disrespect. But I'm getting attacked right now by that energy, so that's why I'm intense too, because I've got to put out a bit more oomph so I can stand strong. You need to understand multidimensionality, how it works, right? There's a bit going on in this room. But the, for you to understand that you are truly sovereign and infinite beings and that what God has done is created its own version of love and its own version of light. It's a very powerful creator being. You know, everyone talks about, oh, God's with a small g and then God with a big g. Yeah, because that God is the head of the empire. Out of all the other gods, it's the God that's risen to the top of the power structure. And it's the God of gods. Sound familiar? And once you understand that there is what I call the flight matrix, which is God's light. And I've done the thing, I've had an incarnation as an angel. Everyone's going to go, oh, it must be Lucifer. No. <laughs> See, program response in the mind, right? Yeah? <laughs> but I'm talking about the narrative that gets thrown around as though it's very confusing. Yeah? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I won't get into that. <laughs> Because even that story is a twist on a twist. Yes? When you talk about the invisible and the visible, Hang on. in the physical world you have to have words to describe what's invisible. Yes. So you cannot bring the two together because they're in two different levels of awareness. So it's very hard to put things into words. Mm. <clears throat> and apart from that, we've all been good and we've all been bad because we didn't know the difference between right and wrong. You wouldn't know what good was. So I would think, you know, we've all been the devil, we've all been angels, because we're all part of one universal mindset, the plasma substance, absolute as well, and yeah, fantastic stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've all, we've all had a go at it. Um, there's another microphone coming. Yeah, thanks, Mariana. We've all had a go at it, and if you, if you feel like you're... Hands up who's really tired, just, just tired. Doesn't matter how much you sleep, you're just tired. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's like I call it a spiritual tiredness. Yeah, it's it's it runs deep. That tiredness runs really deep. It's because we've had a very long and arduous journey through this grand cosmic arena, and we're really tired. And we're the ones who are done, and we're heading out. We're we're integrating. Yeah, we're bringing it all home now, and we're heading out. And it it. To, to be able to integrate everything, we need to understand the difference between these energies, these constructs, this false light and the natural light. And organisations like the Galactic Federa Federation of Light, oh, there's a lot of energy in here, 
um, the angels, the ascended masters, all of that, that is all to do with the light of God. That is all the God matrix. I used to do Reiki, I was right into the angels, yes, I did all that New Age religious stuff. And the New Age religion is East meets West. Yeah? It's a blend of religions. Because it's a test, it's, a, it's another crucible. Because they want to create a global religion. And it's the same characters. It's still all about Archangel Michael and all that stuff. Yeah? Um, this gentleman was handed the mic. Yeah, yeah g'day. Um, meditation, you said something a little bit different there about meditation. Hmm. Uh, I've read recently that they uh, got 1% of the population together, or one-tenth of 1% one to meditate. And uh, for that week, the death rates, those car accidents, the this hmm. and that, all went down in that population. So that was a good meditation, but you yep. mentioned a different angle on meditation there that it's not uh, yeah, could you sure, it? sure so most, time, most of the time when people are meditating they are doing what I call not meditation but heditation because they're doing it from here and especially if they want to do it from the pineal gland which is a biological implant strategically positioned between the pituitary and the amygdala yeah because the pituitary and the amygdala are the two glands that hold our endocrine system in balance, the masculine and the feminine. Now, if I'm a cosmic conqueror, I'm going to insert a biological implant masqueraded as a gland so I can take control of the endocrine system, therefore take control of the perception of reality. That's what I would do. And that's what someone's done. And then what you do is you venerate it. And then you get people to, and you disseminate spiritual doctrine, so you get people to love meditating and focusing on the pineal gland, and as though that is then their perception of reality. So what people are doing is when they connect via the pineal gland, is they're connecting into uh, a biological implant which calibrates their, their perception of reality, and they're seeing reality through the eye of God. If you're a new ager and you're into kundalini and you're into the third eye of the pineal gland, you're doing exactly the same spiritual doctrine and practice as though you are a Freemason and you're getting spirit fire to come up the 33 vertebrae of your spine and, and become a 33 degree Freemason by hitting the eye of God, which is the pineal gland. So what's the difference? Nothing. So while people are going around rubbishing me and calling me a disinformation agent, what they're doing is engaging in the same spiritual doctrines and practices as the ruling bloodline elite and connecting to their deity. And now we've got this thing with psychedelics going on. And I've done plant medicine. Yeah? I haven't done a lot of it, but I've done plant medicine. And there's a big difference between connecting with a plant and doing real plant medicine from the heart and the soul and having a psychedelic experience through the pineal gland. Because if you're doing uh, plant medicine through the pineal gland, then you are doing... Oh, I'll throw a punch here. Um, you need DMT to stimulate the pineal gland into action, into activity. Right, so what's that? That's a hardwired chemical process. Right? So basically, it's, it's like scientism, because it's a chemically induced spiritual experience. It's a big difference between communion in drinking the, the, the substance of a plant and connecting from your heart and your soul with the spirit of the plant and the being who is the plant and then working on what needs to be worked on within your own beingness. Because then from outside, you can see your consciousness, you can see uh, your areas of insecurity, you can see your weaknesses, you can see what areas that you need working on. And plant medicine is hard work. Yeah? But if you go via the pineal gland, it's awe and wonder. Because you're seeing sacred geometry, which is the foundation for God's matrix, because it's a control freak. So it contains all, these, contains all these rigid structures. Let me explain this way. Because another new religion that's emerging is the religion of sacred geometry. 
<coughs> so, what's this? We call it the heart, right? What, what does it symbolise? Now, if I tell you this is love, is that an accurate depiction of love? No, it's it's symbol of love, right? Love, it's a symbol of love, yeah? Love is, you can't create love from that template. But what people are doing is, they're getting told that if they use this template <laughs> and create a light body from it, then they can step into that light body and travel, traverse dimensions of the universe. So what they're doing is, they're using a, 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 a mathematical template, a rigid structure, to create a light vehicle. My light vehicle is not contained within that structure. My light energy permeates multi-dimensions. I'm not going to restrict my light to this template. These are, these are, it's like the icosahedron. Water is the physical manifestation of consciousness in our world. Now, consciousness permeates multi-dimensions. Now, do you really think that that can be contained within an icosahedron? These are, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is these are containers of containment. These are templates of containment. And the God entity needs these containers, needs these templates, because it's a control freak. It has to control its realities and its environments and its domains. That's why the priestly caste, it's all about control. So, that is not love. That is what we use to symbolise love. That is not a light body. You can be used that to symbolise a light body, but the moment you create a light body from that, you've crossed the line into synthetic light. Um, there was the lady at the back there. Can, can we have the, the, mic, the microphone to... It's just that we're recording this on camera. Yep, that's all right. There we go. Yep. Thanks, George. Uh, you were talking about angels and archangels. Yeah. Um, and having worked a lot with those entities, I just mm. wondered, is there any virtue in working with them? Um, okay, so what the God entity has done is created a dialectic. See, God created the image of, a de of the devil because it's a reflection of its own self. God is an entity who has entered this universe, who has become self-deluded within its own ego, thinking it is the creator of all that is and all that exists. That's who, who God is. And it's a pure ego construct that resides in consciousness in our universe. God is not the creator of this universe. God is an entity that's claiming to be the creator, not only of this universe, but all of the existence of the infinite nature of life. Do you understand what's going on here? One being claiming all of that. The infinite nature of life was never created. It has always existed. There's no beginning to it. There's no end to it. It always has been, always will be. This... Cracking, cracking the ceiling of the, the glass, I call it the glass ceiling of the God matrix. When you crack, when you crack this, it's, it's all over. Once you get this, once it lands inside of you, boom, it's gone. Then you will see all the lies in our world. You'll see them for what they are. But this is the key, this is the, this is the one that cracks it. Either you're infinite or you're a created entity. Now, my existence in this universe is a co-creation with me and the universal creator. Do you get that? My soul is a co-creation. I entered this universe from the infinite nature of life 
and, and, the, and, the, and the creator of this universe created this universe from the infinite nature of life. So it's one of us from out there, right? So it's, it creates this incredible universal paradigm. And then when we come in around these realms here, because there's like four levels of just getting a taste, just like dipping your toe in. And if you want to continue with the process, then you merge and you become one with the creator of this universe. And it's a co-creation. Soul is a co-creation. It is the part of you that is, it's unity, it's unified between you and the creator of this universe. God resides here, below the great void. This is the multi-dimensional grand cosmic arena. Above this line, technology doesn't exist. Yes, duality exists all the way to the top of this universe, but it's so fine up the top because it's light, it's vibration. The construct of this universe is this. It's vibration, yeah? That's what, that's what creates this universe into being. So what the creator did was it expressed itself one way away from, from centre, from unity, and started going out of balance and then it realised, whoa, I've got to express myself over here, an absolute counterbalance of the initial expression, so then it can come back in a balance. And, and went, wow, that was a rush. <laughs> I, I want to do that again. So it did it again. See? And then it did it again. And then it just kept doing it. And it created this energy we call light and then manifested realities out of it and then we come inside of it. Now, out here in the, in the infinite nature of life, you've all got your own universes. This isn't the only universe, yeah? Now, here's one for the quantum physicists. All the parallel universes in the multiverse are all other light-based universes and they all exist in this grand cosmic arena. I want to tell you that so you can begin to grasp the magnitude of this universe, how big it is. So you understand what I'm talking about. When I say God exists here in the upper realms of this arena, it's for good reason. All the countless parallel universes that quantum physics talks about exists here in the grand cosmic arena. This is the multi-dimensional grand cosmic arena. Outside of this universe is the omniverse, where we all have our own universes. Now, each of those universes are a unique construct because we have our own unique universal personality. It's its own expression. Therefore, it's going to have its own construct. Do you get that? This one is light. And we're all inside each other because it's a big fun park. Life is... The one thing I... When I was back connected to the infinite nature of life, the one thing I realised was there were common threads that ran through all of it as far as I could perceive because there's no end to it, right? So you can't perceive... There's no totality. So there is no one infinite creator, which is the raw material. That's the same as a God matrix. It's um, the sense of adventure... Isn't that awesome? And love. Because it's, love is this energy which is this cohesive harmony that just binds life together. It bonds life in a cohesion. That's love. It's a beautiful energy. And the sense of adventure is the key ingredient because <laughs> haven't we lost ours? Haven't we just, hasn't that just been pounded out of us in this reality? Where's that childlike sense of adventure and curiosity? Where's that gone? We're all boring droids, right? <laughs> what's, what's going on, folks? Hey? When's the last time you went and skipped in a park or something? Seriously. <laughs> yeah, so angels and ascended masters and all that, they are all in service to the light of God. I needed to take you on that journey to sort of give the background material to have that answer. And places, beings like Archangel Michael, for example, that is an office of position to be the right-hand man of God. Archangel Michael hasn't always been 
that, that entity, the energy that is that, hasn't always been that and won't always be that. Yeah? So when that being's done, another one will step in to be the right-hand man of God. And all these beings are dedicated to the service to the light of God. We, many, I don't know, lots of people, including myself, we have played those roles. So it gets to the point where, because the, the realities, the heavenly realms that God creates, which you have to earn your way into, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a credit-based system. Yeah, if you say enough Hail Marys or whatever and pray enough times and all that sort of stuff, you've got to earn your way into those realities. And then when you do, it's all about good protocol, good behaviour. They're very sterile. And the love there has a hard edge to it. Like I showed you that Nordic before, and I said, feel the difference? This is kind of a hard edge to it. Now, you need to understand that we have been deprived of real love. You've been cut off from your soul, been cut off from the true nature of life and this reality. And what you've got to be careful of is what I call, I say, beware the cosmic candy. Because beings are going to come here and it's all going to be about love and it's all going to be about light. And people are just flocking to that energy like child in a candy store. Don't be so naive. Please. Don't be so naive. The only way you're going to get your true point of reference is deep down in here. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus turns up in my room emitting all this light and just blasting me with all this love and light. And I literally stand up in my bed, then hop down off my bed. I say, what are you doing? I didn't ask you to come here. How dare you just impose on me like this? Because... The energy that was coming out of that being was no match for the energy that's in my soul. The love you experience deep down in your soul. The heart of the Christos is in your heart already. It's already there. You don't pray to an entity outside of you. You don't invoke an entity to come into your heart, which is what a lot of the doctrine asks you to do. You have to accept Jesus into your heart is the doctrine. You're inviting an entity in. It's powerful stuff. I know there's a lot of energy coming out of me and I just commend you for <laughs> handling it because it's a lot. Um, and I get it. Yeah? It's because the matrix here is so thick. <laughs> You've got to understand it's a lot of work to stand here and deliver and express the true nature of life in a reality that's constructed with so many lies and deception and falseness. Yeah? And because we're so used to lies, people come along who want to tell the truth and you get labelled a liar, a charlatan, a fraud, a disinformation agent. I get all that. I get all of that and a lot worse. I get it all the time. It's amazing. How frightened people are of the truth. Yes. May I just ask, who, who, who do you talk to? If you go out and meditate or you're alone in your head, who are you talking to? Well, at any given moment, it depends. If I want to uh, connect to the earth for whatever reason, I'll connect to the earth or the sun. Um, I enjoy being me in this reality, and I also connect to my reality. So, where I live, there's beautiful trees. So you commune with the trees, you commune with nature, yeah. Um, you can commune with the wind, you can commune with a mountain, with the mineral kingdom. Uh, I went to the big island of Hawaii because Pele called me. So I went there and I had a total male egoic meltdown. She totally demolished my ego. It was awesome. That woman is so powerful. Pele is the... Uh, the Big Island itself, it's one massive volcano. It's the biggest, it's the second largest mountain in our solar system. The only one that beats it is Olympus Mons on Mars. It's way bigger than Mount Everest. <laughs> it just most of it's under the under the water. Um, but she is incredible. She's just yeah. And the tales about her are just there's so much falseness. But it's Mother Earth incarnate into the Vulcan kingdoms on the Earth. It's Mother Earth herself. 
as a volcano. She, what these, it's understanding that how beings incarnate in the different kingdoms. It's like uh, ayahuasca, for example, um, or San Pedro is a better example. San Pedro is the sun incarnate as a cactus plant in this reality, in the plant kingdom. Um, I've experienced myself as a tree already. Um, so we're incarnated into more than one kingdom. That's perfectly normal. Um, we are the galaxy, all the stars that you see out there are beings, and a lot of these people, the beings out there, are incarnated on Earth right now. The way the, the natural, the real creator works is it hasn't created everything, and then we just kind of like these subservient little slaves inside of a reality it's created, and we must, be, we must be in service to the light of God. It's not like that. The natural creator is a co-creative process. It's a participatory process. So the galaxies out there that are created are us, because we need to experience what it's like to be a creator being on that level. The stars are us. The planets are us. They're all individual beings experiencing what it's like to be that expression as a planet, that expression as a star, that expression as a tree, that expression as an ET in the Cirrus system, for example. The universe is full of life, and we've all co-created this universe together. The creator facilitates the creative process, but you work in conjunction with the natural creator of this universe. Because you also create realities that end up providing experiences for other beings to enter into and have awesome experiences and great learning and wisdom is the result. It's a beautiful, co-creative, participatory process. That's the natural way, not this other version that gets sold to you. Um, microphone. Pardon? Yeah. Yep. I want to stand up and face this way, actually, for a change. <laughs> I just like to go to the sage geometry um, with the Star of David. Yep. Um, and also, what happened for me was looking at the points, integrating on each point sacred sites all around the world. Mm -hmm. So when we actually look at sacred geometry, and if we were in the false god realm, mm. but... Once we own ourselves, we can actually put love into whatever, anywhere, and actually shift that consciousness. So we go to the beautiful plants, the mountains, the waters. Mm. So what I did was integrate through sacred geometry with flower and life to different places on the planet. And by saying I go to Haleakala or Machu Picchu or Uluru, through those points, I integrated. And in that direct alignment, I would actually go to the star system hmm. within my body hmm. and align to my chakras, not the normal chakras, hmm. but they are still the normal chakras because I'm not putting a negative on this at all. Not a negative. Because we are all one. To me, I call it Inlakesh. And in the Maya, they say, we are one in Inlakesh. I am you, and you are me. And we are star beings, and we are star light. And that, through the sacred geometry, I won't put a negative on, I'm shaking the bit, my knees are <laughs> um, But I really want to honour you for your work, and I really integrate with that. But I don't go to plant medicines. Mm. I go to light, mm. and earth, sun, moon, you name it. But to me, I was told, don't go to plant medicine because it's for red man. And I, mean, I, I haven't gone there. Mm. Maybe you've got more red man in you than mm. I need. But anyway, I'd like to say that about the sake of geometry because anyway, I love your Thank you. sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, horses for courses. Um, and I haven't done that much of it either. Sorry? I haven't done that much plant medicine. No, no, yeah. I was just sharing. Um, but it works for some people and doesn't work for other people. Horses for courses. Um, when you go to the sacred sites, uh, instead of using sacred geometry to connect to the sites, um, you can go on a deeper level um, and just go beyond the need for sacred geometry and just go straight with your heart to the land. Without, without the need for a template. 
Yeah. It so it actually disappears once you align. Yeah. Yes. So you just go heart soul essence straight to the land, and and connect straight to the consciousness of the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, whoever the being is that you wish to connect to, and you can connect to the ancestors because the records you go back through time and you can you can actually access records of of past events by you know communicating the mineral kingdom or communicating the plant kingdom or even just going back to um, sometimes we get uh, called to go to certain places on earth because we had a previous life in that area and we've left stuff in vibrational fields of energy and when we go there we unlock them and we use them in, in we bring them forward into this time and use them today so if you get a calling to go to some land somewhere you might want to follow that calling it's really amazing. So, I need your opinion about the flat earth and the inner earth. Uh huh. Okay. To me, the flat earth is a psyop. Um, it's another uh, part of the agenda to um, cut us off from our planetary mother because if the earth is flat, then it's a masculine energy. It's flat, linear, plane. And that, that's male energy uh, compared to a, a, a round. You know, she's not a, I've, seen, I've seen the planet from afar. And just to help the flat earth people try and understand what we're talking about. <clears throat> it's interesting how virulent their arguments are. Right? They're quite fanatical about it. Um, and and I, I've seen the planet from afar on many occasions and she's round. But she's not a sphere, like she's not a ball. She does bulge in the equator, yeah? It's a bit of a squash sort of thing. But if you look at time, <clears throat> so time is linear, and time is also conical, and time is also spherical. Uh, sorry, circular, conical, and spherical. They're the four, four expressions of time. And before you go into total no time, which is a paradox, but we live in one. Okay, so if this is my higher self and this is a era of time on the planet, and let's say we choose what, what people call the processional cycle, which the duration to me is 24,832 years because it's a seated fractal, it's a compounding equation, and that's how we um, we go into, if you understand, um, uh, the mean harmonic, the golden ratio. It's, it's a journey towards centre. It's a, so hard to put into words. You need a compounding equation to continue to create the momentum of this reality as a fractal process. So, from up here, I had an incarnation there, so another one here. Let's say you have two incarnations really close to each other. And, you know, that could be a thousand years apart. And so you come down, and then there's another one here. So you, let's say you come with your awareness down onto, onto the timeline, and you're travelling along the timeline. Now, this blows egos out of the water, because from up here, you're outside of this circle of time. And from up here, the whole thing gets created instantly. Because you're outside of time. You're outside of that circle of time. So, you come down with your awareness and you're having an incarnation and you're travelling along the circumference of the circle. You are now experiencing time in a linear fashion. So, you've gone from a circular viewpoint to a linear viewpoint. When you go off the earth, She's circular. You come down on the earth, opens up to a linear experience, doesn't it? I don't know if that helps to answer it. Now, the trouble egos have with this process is this incarnation's already happened, so is that one, so is that one. So your journey along the timeline has already happened. Hey. No! I hear egos going. That can't be true. I'm in control. The beauty of it is, yes, you have free will, and 
No, you don't have free will. Both exist at the same time. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's just beautiful. I love it. That's what I love about this universe, because it's a universe of contrasting expressions. Remember the waveform? So let me explain it like this. This is the easiest way. I do it every time at all my talks. Yeah? I'm going to have a drink of water. So I just decided to have a drink of water. The truth is, that was a decision I was always going to make. Oh, look at that. <laughs> do you see what I see? Seriously, I'm not being a smart ass. This is beautiful because you're, I can see all your minds just going, some are going, whoa. The future's already happened. <laughs> Every decision you make are decisions you were always going to make. Can your ego be at peace with that? Can it? Can you find peace with your creative process? To know that you can relax and let go. Because this takes the pressure off the ego too. Because when you get your ego to surrender control of this life to the greater you, up here, Big U's got your back. Just relax and flow. Turn inside out. Let you, the greater part of your being, which is in commune, communion with Mother Earth, the Sun, the galaxy, the universe, everyone else's higher beings, just let it flow and allow yourself to unfold. That's what it means to be in the moment. That's the real now moment. Turn the inside out. There was a lady there which had her arm up before, but yeah, but she's not there anymore. That's all right. She must have moved on. Yes. All right. Hi guys. Just touching on the angel subject again. Hmm. Is there a synthetic aspect of angels and archangels and a infinite natural aspect? No, the actual the. Archangels are the archons. People haven't made that connection. And these are the beings of the false light matrix. So they're in service to the light of God. And they have good intentions. Because they're, they're caught up in the dialectic that God has created. Remember, God created the image of the devil because it's a reflection of its own self. God has created its own version of this. And you've got angels on one. And you've got demons on another. And this world has been sucked into the drama vortex that this God has created. It's imposed its version of life over the natural order and everyone's been sucked into this version of light. So how do you differentiate synthetic light versus natural light? In here. This is the best bullshit meter you will ever have. Your soul is the natural expression of love and light in this universe. It's the part of you that's one with the natural creator. Once you experience that love, it's kind of like all the pain and suffering that you've had in life, all of it, there's a part of you in there that no one can touch. There's no name for it. It's just a presence. <laughs> that. that. Because the moment an angel turns up, the flavour of light and love, like that Jesus character that turned up, I told it to go away. And I said, you're an imposter. The true heart of the Christos is in my heart and the true Christ would never, ever, ever behave that way. <coughs> never. It'll never just turn up. It doesn't behave like that. You, you know the characteristics yeah, because you're in relationship already with that energy. I'm already in relationship with the sun. If that being was to turn up, incarnate on earth, I would know. Yeah? If, if, if I was in its presence, I would know. I reckon that being's here. I don't know who it is. But I, I reckon one day in the future, the veil will part enough for people to open up their heart and their soul, and they're going to know who Mother Earth is. They're going to know who the sun is. They're going to know who the galaxy is. They're going to know who the universal creator is. The problem we have is the God matrix. 
It's created its own version, and we are all keep. Com it's all this commentary within this reality. Yeah, it's all you've known. It's all you've been exposed to. I'm not. I'm not upset with you. I'm not having a go at you. It's all I was ever exposed to until I had that experience in 2003, which blew everything wide open for me. When I reintegrated with my soul, I got to see the whole shebang. But what's really interesting is how many people, how many New Age healers are coming to me and they're saying, George, when you first came out of this stuff, I thought you were evil. I thought you were a deceiver and a disinformation agent. I'm just telling you what I've experienced with this, yeah? I'm not saying you're thinking that. But I need to explain the, the process, yeah? And people are now coming to me and New Age healers are stopping... Because I used to do Reiki and I used to do all that stuff. And it's business. It's business, yeah? It's good business. Because what God has done is it's unleashed all these energies into our world because it needs to provide a solution to the problem it's creating. Problem, reaction, solution, right? Yeah? And it's heading for harvest. It's, it's gonna, it, it wants to save you. Because if you're not empowered as a free, sovereign, infinite creator being, if you're not that, then you need saving. And you can't be saved if you're a creator being. And if you're sovereign. You've got to be subservient and you've got to be a follower in order to be saved. You've got to be disempowered. Yeah? Because if you're sovereign and you're infinite, you don't need saving. It's the last thing you need. Yeah. Yeah, see, we're treated as chattel. Yeah? We're treated as chattel by these entities. They see us as. You know, there's a lot of angels that will come and they, lo they dearly love us. They do. Some angels are just so genuine. Others are assholes, I'm going to call it that, because they are. But some are really genuine people. Like, I really have a lot of respect for Archangel Michael. I do. And Sandalphin. They're my two faves. Good guys. They genuinely mean well. However, they're in service to the light of God. And if I interact with them, I tell them that. Go, okay, guys, come on. <laughs> if you're not seeing it yet... The day will come and you will see it. It's happened to all of us. It happens to everybody. I lost my question then. It's for harvest. Harvest. So, <clears throat> this reality is a fractal of the universe and we are in the process of birthing ourselves as fully integrated, unified, universal beings. That's the point of this reality. This is what, if, if you connect with Mother Earth through your heart, soul, essence, you will remember the purpose of this reality. We have come here to integrate everything we have seen, everything we have done, and everything we have been. That's why we are incarnate into a human vessel that is a fractal of the universe. All our galaxies, all our cells are galaxies, all our atoms are star systems. There are more, there are babies being born in this reality that access more life force in this universe than any of the gods out there, naturally. And they're, in, they're insanely jealous. And it's about, it's called wag the dog. Because the danger about the creation of this reality is if, if this reality was to be taken control of by an energy, then it would be able to access the universe from this reality. And that's why there's a big war for this reality. It's all about control. It's all about real estate. Because if these entities can take control of your spirit and your consciousness, they want to own all your creations out there. It's about assets. So if you've got a galaxy out there, and they can take control of you here, they want to influence control over that galaxy from you here. Because you are the portals of everything you have seen, everything you have done, and everything you have been. So all your creations out there then become vulnerable. That's the double-edged sword side of this reality. Our genetics are the most prized possession in the universe. I think the movie Jupiter Ascending explained that pretty well. 
we access all timelines because we access all dimensions and all realities. Our, our genetics are the most prized commodity out there. And we are, when, when you pray to an entity, you are feeding an entity more power. There's more juice in your intentions here in this reality because of the fractal nature, because of the density of this reality. When you pray to another entity, it gets fed more grunt, more juice, more energy, becomes more empowered than it ever, ever has in all of its existence. So when earth humans pray to a being, wow, do they pray. And do those beings get fed? And I've seen the energy pouring from the earth, moving through the dimensions to the entity everyone calls God. Whether you call it Jehovah, whether you call it Allah, whether you call it Yahweh, whether you call it Shiva, doesn't matter what you call it. These are all different interface modules for each culture which gives it access to the people. And the energy just pours from the earth and goes to this entity and it's just sucking it up and it's never been fed like ever before. So it needs to hold on to that level of empowerment and it needs desperately to hold on to you as a resource. It's desperate. And it feeds off your love. If there's one thing that conquerors have learnt in conquering is when you put forces on the ground on a planetary reality, you always get a rebellion eventually. It doesn't work. But if you get people to love their imprisonment, how many people love being searched at an airport now so they can feel safe? How many people love that in the general community? I'm telling you, love is the greatest weapon that is being used against the human race. I'm not going to dress in white robes and chant and prayer and do all these things. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stand and I'm going to deliver and I'm going to tell you how it truly is. And a lot of people don't like it. But I don't care. Because like a good friend of mine, interdimensionally, and in this level, Mark Passio, he's a good man. And he tells it like it is. He's doing different work in different levels. But my goodness, what I love about what he says is truth is belligerent. I want to quote that man. Truth is belligerent. I interviewed him on my podcast, Super Radio podcast. Truth does, does not care whether you like it or not. Truth is truth. It, it's just what is. Whatever your romantic ideas around it all, that's up to you. But what is, is. And there's no changing what is. You can, you can, you can put layers of falsehoods over what is, like what's happened to this world. If anyone connects to Mother Earth, you will know. Have a box of tissues with you because you will feel her pain and what she's given of herself as a planetary woman to facilitate such an experience. Unbelievable amount of pain. Every woman carries it. And us men, we have no freaking idea. Our perception of this reality is so far removed from woman's perception, from woman's experience. When I connected with Mother Earth, I killed over in a fetal position. And I, there's so much pain I was foaming out of my mouth. And it lasted for 15 to 20 minutes, and then my greater being stepped in and said, enough, otherwise you're going to have a cardiac arrest and you're going to die. And I bawled my eyes out for hours because I finally got to start to have a taste of what it is to be this planetary woman and what it feels like to be a woman. Us guys have got no idea. We think we know. Oh boy, do we think we know. No. Nah. Nah. Their emotional torment because of the moon their body gets swung and torn, the torment from one side to the other. And I explain about the moon, people that venerate the moon, oh, you so need to wake up. The moon is no longer what it used to be. The moon is the ball and chain around 
the divine feminine, the round woman. It's the control mechanism. It's what's suppressing the feminine. That's a big talk on its own. So, um, how are we going for time? Uh, 10 minutes or 12 minutes to go, roughly. Okay, this gentleman here is... Oh, okay, and then, and then this gentleman here has had his hand up for a lot, long time. How did you reintegrate your story? Where? How? How? Okay, in 2003, my galactic family came and picked me up and took me to a much larger craft via a shuttle craft towards the Cirrus star system because the, um, I'm a composite, we're all composites. Uh, so my composite, the, the main three star systems that I'm a composite of are Cirrus, Orion and the Pleiades. And at that time in my life, my Syrian aspect was my most prominent. So that was why I was taken into uh, an area near the, the Cirrus star system because I needed to connect with that aspect of my, my beingness. And my family stood around me while I laid down on like a really comfortable chair and they, they had sort of lot like brown, like latte coloured sort of robes and uh, they had like brown hair, some had different coloured hair, some had streaks of gold in their hair, one of them had a pointy nose. Um, but when I came on board the much larger craft there was all different races and everybody was so happy to see me, it was awesome, it was just reuniting with family. And that's the key ingredient too, when someone turns up if an ET turns up, instantly you know who they are. If it's your family, or if it's an ally, or if it's uh, a friend. The ones that um, want to control you, oh, I'm your long lost family from the Pleiades, or I'm your long lost brother, or I'm your this, or I'm your that, whatever. They're the false ones. It's like uh, right now, do you have like a, a brother or a sister or a yeah, so when she walks in the room, does she have to announce that she's your sister? No, you just know, instantly. She's in the room, you know who she is, right? That's what it's like when they turn up. That's how you, do you discern, yeah? Instant recognition. There's no telepathic communication, there's no delay, yeah? So um, what they did was they held my body in stasis because so much of me was coming out, it was similar to a death process. So we connected our heart soul essences and created a unity. It was, we did this beyond technology. And we created a unified field of love which was going to hold my body in stasis. So then I came out of my body and that unity was holding my body in stasis. And the, the magnetic pull was so strong, I was really holding on as best as I could to stay there with them. And I remember my brother from Sirius looking up at me and saying, Hold on, hold on, you haven't done this for a long time, hold on. And then I, he goes, he gave me the nod, I just let go and poof, I was out of there. And I just saw everything shrinking. I saw the, the ship shrink, I saw all the stars coming together, I saw myself exit the galaxy from the core, and then I saw all the galaxies coming together and then I popped out of the grand cosmic arena. Popped out. And then from there, I start, and, and that, this grand cosmic arena from outside of it, is a tiny little vortex of light, and I perceived it about this big. So all the parallel universes, countless, that quantum physics talks about, and all the dimensional cosmic arena, all the dimensions in the grand cosmic arena, ended up being one little vortex of light. And I popped out of it. And then I was there, and I was feeling these higher self realms and then becoming one with the universal creator. And then I experienced the infinite nature of life and I got a peek outside into the omniverse, which um, I've shared, tried to share what it looked like. You can't really relate what it looks like here except just a bunch of dots everywhere. Not like stars, it's, it was different to that. And I got to see this universe, because this, this is interesting the way this universe functions, because this is the great void. Even though there's another void there, it's really broken up into two. Physically, it looks more like this. And there's kind of like a, a little connection there. Yeah, you've got two realms. So, because it's a universe of contrasting expressions, so the alter ego of this is what manifests this, and they're two different expressions of the universal creator. And, uh, and then I got to... Um, 
be the universe because I was one with the universal creator and I got to see all the different realms. And I didn't bring all the memory of everything that I saw back. What I brought back was what I needed for my journey. And the one thing that really, really stuck with me was watching all that energy pouring off the earth and going to that God entity. That, that really freaked me out. Because you don't, you don't see it. You're embodying it. You're feeling everything. Yeah? You feel it all. You feel the ego of the God entity. You feel, you feel its intention, its nature. You understand it from the inside out, all its insecurities. I know so much about that entity, I haven't even begun expressing about it. Yeah? You, you know everything there is to know about it. And you know everything there is to know about everything because you are everything. This is the way we communicate in the natural order. It's integration. You become... It's like um, I was in the fifth dimension, what we can call the fifth dimension, right, on this planet. And uh, I don't want to be new agey. It's all these dimension things are being hijacked. And when this lady was walking across the courtyard, because I went there for a meeting, she just nodded. And in that moment, the moment I put my attention, my awareness on her, I saw her entire universal journey. From the moment she entered, and I saw all her creations, her expressions as galaxies, as stars, as plants, as microorganisms, as mineral kingdoms, all her incarnations into every reality, everything she is a part of in this universe, I didn't just see it, I embodied it in that moment. The whole lot. No quantum computer can come anywhere near that amount of processing instantaneously. Nothing can come anywhere close to that. That is pure soul level processing and integration. This is about beingness, yeah? Well beyond any form of intellect, well beyond any form of consciousness. Consciousness, consciousness is a part of that process, yeah? It's the interface. But it's the, it's the beingness, which is what is important. So when you meet a being, you integrate, you become one, you, you connect one heart soul lessons to the other. Then when, you, when you're with other races who aren't in the natural order, it's telepathy. Yeah, especially technological, uh, t you know, techno technologically based societies, because they function more from the intellect, it's to do more with uh, consciousness, so it's going to be telepathic communication. Yeah? Because they've lost, this is atrophied in them. Yeah? Sorry, this gentleman was next. And the black T-shirt here with the glasses. Thanks. Um, so we're so far off the track of what I was going to ask about. I always feel that, but um, I was interested. From, oh, so from uh, much earlier on, you were talking about um, you know extraterrestrial interest coming through because hmm. uh, humanity started like rediscovering these ancient technologies and sacred sites and things like that. I'm interested to get your take on. Um, you know, potentially either future humans or extraterrestrial involvement with ancient peoples in the original development of those technologies, you know, even on. Um, I just need you to ask that question again because I was tracking the energy on it, but I didn't quite, didn't quite get it. Okay. Um, basically, your take on um, the development of the ancient technologies yep. that were being rediscovered during the Industrial Revolution. Yes. Okay, and so some, some of those technologies, um, what they tried to do was to track the people that are reincarnated on the earth that were a part of the development of those technologies and then use those people to reactivate those technologies. Um, so a bit of that occurred. Um, I'm still not quite getting the full gist of your question for some reason. Um, it's like other things that you were kind of pointing to. So, like, there's strong memes out there, like, we let off nuclear bombs, therefore UFOs showed up, right? So, other things are like, the pyramids were built because UFOs levitated things, blah, blah, blah. You know, and other things like that. So, yeah, I'm interested in you know, that kind of thing. The, the way we built the pyramids, and that was a first person statement, wasn't it? In the first person, um, was we connected with the mineral kingdom. And then we ask them who in the mineral kingdom, first of all, on the planet, were going to participate in the project. That's what you do. 
You don't just think, come up with an idea, oh, that, that rock over there looks good, I'm just going to go and cut it up. It doesn't work that way. No. You first, you connect with Mother Earth, and if you're going to create such a powerful monument and a big monument, because that, that is a fractal of this reality. The Great Pyramid is in that structure, in its shape, is a fractal of the Earth realm. Geodetically, it locks in. It, it, all the measurements. It's an expression of the Earth in that, in that structure, in that form. It's about leverage. It's about understanding how to leverage your reality and resonance. Yeah. So what you do is you go to the mineral kingdom and you say, who in the mineral kingdom wants to be a part of this project and this is what it's going to look like 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now. This is what our intention with this project is. And this is what we do. Who is it in their soul journey within the mineral kingdom to participate in this with us? And then you will get the message. You will know where to go on the planet to use which beings from the mineral kingdom. Then what you do is you ask the mineral kingdom to divide itself. And it will divide itself into beautifully shaped blocks, whatever you want. Because... <clears throat> The rate of the spin of the atoms determines the molecular vibration which determines the density of matter. So when you connect into the heart and the soul of the mineral kingdom, you're going into the sub-quantum field, into the fields of intention. And from there, you're connecting to the spirit, the heart of the being. And then from out there, projects what it wants to do with itself into the physical realm. So fields of intention, looking back out through the sub-quantum field into the quantum into the atomic, into the molecular. Yeah? So what then happens is the mineral kingdom divides itself into the shape you want, and then together you go, okay, we want you to move over here. So it's just going to alter the rate of the spin of its atoms. So it changes its molecular vibration. So it's less dense. You just levitate. You just push it along while it floats with your little finger. You ever, you ever seen beings just pushing things along, floating in the air? Has anyone ever had that in their experiences on craft or anything? No? Okay. Sometimes I'll use a technology, but usually it's mostly the heart soul essence of a being is connecting to the, the foundational existence of whatever it is, the object is. Again, integration, right? That's the natural way. And then you ask whatever that expression, like this thing here, I, I can't do it. I know the process, but I'm not allowed to do it in this reality yet. I'm really hoping the day will come soon when I can do these things. But imagine just being able to float that like that because you, I connect with it and I'm able to ask the consciousness and the intention and the creator, the being that created this as well, because this, this is a living thing. Yeah, it's got a lot of dynamics to it and there's the consciousness of electricity in it as well and there's all different levels of reality going on in here. Yeah, all different compositions. So... It's easier with a rock than one of these things, really, because you're only dealing with one energy, but here you've got all different layers of consciousness going on. So, and then they just levitate, put them in a position, and monuments that have been built this way stand the test of time. The, the crumbly pyramids, the ones falling down, they're the younger pyramids. They're not older. The archaeologists want to tell you they're older because they look older, but they're actually younger. But the reason they're crumbling is because they're built the other way. Rocks or mud brick, slaves, totally different approach. So, and then because you're placing it, the consciousness of the rock and the consciousness of all the other rocks, because then they become individual beings, and then with the land and the intention of the land, because where you place them, you have to have an agreement with all the nature spirits, to create what you want to create in that location, and it's all because Mother Earth is in conjunction with that. Do you get where I'm coming from? It's quite deep, isn't it? Right? It's like um, the Federation of Free Worlds. Who's heard of them? Yeah? It's kind of like the Galactic Federation of Light. The Federation of Free Worlds is like our United Nations out there in the galaxy. And... Uh, I was speaking to a guy in Sweden who is from the Federation of Free Worlds and he goes, to, uh, he goes out of his body, he's here from a, a, a kind of a grey hybrid type of race and he comes out of his body three times a week. So they pick him up from the craft, with a craft, from the earth, he goes back to a, a big craft orbiting the earth 
and then his consciousness comes out of his human body and goes back to his home world and he attends meetings there. He, he re-inhabits his uh, incarnational construct in that reality as the grey hybrid because it's held in stasis while his consciousness is out of it. And um, he then attends meetings with the Federation of Free Worlds and these are all the ET races who have gotten together because they have all these good intentions about what they want to do with Earth. They want to introduce technologies, they want to clean the environment up. They've got all these good intentions, right? It sounds nice, doesn't it? They want to cure all our illnesses, the lot. And I said to him, well, that's all well and good. And he told me the time frame that they want to do all this. And I said, so in these meetings, was Mother Earth present and attending and had a voice at these meetings? Was the sun? present and attending and had a voice and participating in these meetings and he fell back in his chair and he's like his jaw was down his eyes popped oh I'd, I'd like to think so and I said no they weren't there because these beings are incredible beings right holding the space of a fractal of the universe for starters these are incredible beings and you'd know if they were there and the point I was trying to make with him is while your Federation of Free Worlds, which is a massive conglomerate of extraterrestrial races, massive, which is part of what they want to introduce us into, it's a huge political body in our galaxy. I said, I want you to realise just how shallow you people are. You might have good intentions, but you're imposing your ideologies here. You're not including Mother Earth, you're not including Father Son. The sun's masculine at the moment, by the way. Right? It's not female. It's the fire. The sun's the fire. The earth is the crucible, if you understand the alchemy. So, the fire's a masculine. The crucible's a feminine. It's really that, that simple. So, we've got, we've got races having huge deliberations, huge meetings that want to come and do stuff here, but they give no regard to what Mother Earth wants, to what the sun wants, and what the collective group soul essence of humanity wants because there's this incredible dynamic relationship going on between the group soul essence of humanity and the earth and the sun because we're fractals we're at the very end of a very long process the galaxy is a fractal of the grand cosmic arena the solar system is a fractal of the galaxy the earth is a fractal of the solar system the human is a fractal of the earth. Fractal compression. You're walking universes. Yes, time, almost time. We have to finish. Oh, I do apologise. It uh, gets like that. We can just go on and on and on. I think there was another slide I just wanted to put up there. Uh, we went through that. Okay. I talked about that. Ah, this gives you an idea. This is, the, this is what the God entity has created. This gives you a bit of an idea. The duplicitous force. And please ignore those, because if you're into the New Age religion, it'll do your head in. <laughs> Just ignore those dimensional numbers there. So, because my fifth dimension is very different to everyone else's. Okay? Um, when you hear 12th dimensional ETs and 12th dimensional angels and all that, it's all in here, below the great void, in, in the way these other people are expressing them. So, yeah, it, it's like, a, it's what cancer is. Did you know that? Are you aware that what, what cancer is in the human being? <coughs> cancer are cells that start doing their own thing out of the, the synergy of the human being, right? Crazy cell. They're what? They call it crazy cell. Crazy cell, Yeah. They, they fall out of synergy with the, the human body and they do their own thing. They become radical cells. Yeah? That's why. We're fractals of the universe and we're experiencing what the creator of this universe experiences. So, I'm going to take it back to this. I have, um, if I could do a quick plug, I have an online community site, We Are Infinite, for the price of less than a cup of coffee a week, you get access to incredible information, life-changing information. It really is. And um, it's a community that's growing and it's fun and there's lots of goodies in there, including 38 podcasts from Super Radio, which was my podcast radio program. 
So give that a go if you'd like. And um, I want to say thank you to Mariana for inviting me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's been a great honour for me to be able to stand up and share my knowledge and wisdom with you. Um, whatever you do in your life, you follow the calling of your heart and your soul. And don't let anybody tell you what to do. Like I told you I was going to be passionate. I told you I was going to be with conviction here today. I've had these direct experiences, so no one's going to change my mind about them. This is a reality for me, yeah? But no one has to go where I'm going. There's people that need to go into the realms of God. They need to follow into these other realities because they've yet to finish their exploration of these realities. There's no judgment. There's no, <laughs> if you go there, you're evil. You know, there's no, I, I, yeah, okay. So follow your path and be your authentic self. Embody your soul. Because my love for you is unconditional and it's eternal and it will never waver. So thank you once again. Appreciate it.